He's yeah. never he's never been washed right. up in my eyes. What is so impressive is how he's going down the field. He's so accurate. You know the amazing thing, Omar. I said it earlier. When you get old in your career, you know, little thing called doubt starts creeping into your mind. That word's not in his vocabulary. He's going to take you. Yeah, he's going to turn the football over because if you don't risk in life, you don't gain in life. And that's the way he believes. He has more confidence in his abilities than any quarterback I've seen in a long time. All right, 20 seconds. Let's say the Packers don't get their running game going. Are they good enough to win the NFC? I'm saying just the NFC. I'm not mentioning the NFC. Well, they're going to win their division. I, well, I, I don't say it. it's going to be between them and Detroit. I don't think either of them are going to back up, so I think it's going to be between those two. Are they good enough? On any given Sunday. On any given movie. Sunday. Any given Sunday. Brian, back to you, my friend. All right, let's sneak this in, guys. Seahawks and Browns. Thank you, guys. That was entertaining. Late in the fourth, two seconds to go. Josh Brown, 22 yards away. Oh, we got through. Tied it up at 30. Just drilled it. We're going overtime. First possession for the Seahawks in OT. Fourth and one. Oh, Maurice Morris stuffed at the line. Did not get the first down. Browns take it over. It was that close. Ensuing drive. Phil Dawson, 24 yards away. He splits it. Browns take this one in overtime for the dozens watching on television. 33 to 30 <laughs> is your final. Again, the Browns take that. The Browns off to a five and three start. I like Tom Brady there saying, boy, we haven't had competition in a while. I found it quite exhilarating in a way. They thought they might win. It was entertaining. You can get much more on ESPN News if you want to keep up on that game, by the way. All right, we got college football coming up here on ESPN. SMU in Houston ready to take the field. Conference USA football coming up next. Thanks for watching SportsCenter. We've got a good one cooking tonight in Houston. The work week doesn't start until tomorrow, so it's party time at Robertson Stadium. Game faces are on. Now it's time to go out and hit something. The Cougars trying to walk the walk in Conference USA. They control their own destiny in the West Division, but they need to win tonight. and the Houston Cougars have big Texas-style dreams this season. Tonight, another chance to keep that dream alive, but they cannot afford to stub their toe this evening. The Cougars at 4-1 in Conference USA play, taking on a team in transition, the Mustangs of SMU. Well, big picture time. Let's take a look at the ESPNU All-State Standings Review of the BCS standings released earlier today. Ohio State still number one, but there's a new number two, LSU replacing Boston College, Oregon. Kansas and Oklahoma round out the top five. So glad you could join us on a Sunday evening. My name is Eric Collins alongside Bill Curry. Dave Ryan will join us in just a couple of moments. Well, we, we give you this opportunity every single week, Coach. Your first uh, observations on the BCS standings. Well, it's getting more fun. I did not think we would have a dominant team this week, this year. But Ohio State at Penn State, when they took the Nittany Lions apart, I think we may have a dominant team, and it may be the Buckeyes. And uh, still a lot of football left to be played. Well, here in Conference USA, it has been an interesting week. Just seven days ago, SMU head coach Phil Bennett was told that he will not be around to coach the Mustangs in 2008. So, Phil Bennett is a late duck coach and make things even more difficult for SMU they're taking on a very difficult offense in Houston tonight a very unusual offense Donnie Avery and Anthony Allridge are the only two players in the history of NCAA football to gain 200 yards rushing 300 yards receiving respectively in the same game as they did against Rice ask Art Briles about him he says well they're not very big at least on the outside we get it coach but we also get that they're one of the most productive tandems in the history of NCAA football and they're here tonight. Art Bryles has got a team full of speed at the skill positions, and he's taken on Phil Bennett for quite possibly the final time as Conference USA rivals. Phil Bennett still has four games remaining. So like we mentioned, he is a lame duck. He will not be around in 2008 in Dallas. Houston will kick off the football. That's T.J. Lawrence, the sophomore, will get us started. Back deep, Jesse Henderson and James Maps. And it'll be Henderson taking it out of the end zone. Henderson out close to the 20-yard line. And that is where SMU will start on offense. SMU led by sophomore signal caller Justin Willis. 
6'1", 210 pounds out of Denton, Texas. With his first touchdown pass, he will break the SMU all-time record for touchdowns thrown with 41. When we asked Phil Bennett about leaders on the team, he said it's Justin. Justin's the man. Everybody respects him. Justin Willis, 14 touchdown passes, 11 interceptions, completing 58% of his throws. Starts off in the shotgun. Pocket collapses, and he pushes forward for a couple of yards. Well, with SMU starting lineup, here's half of the Pony Express, Craig James. Down in Houston, my old hometown, the Ponies will take on the Houston Cougars. They'll be led on offense by Justin Willis, at quarterback. Willis is a great scrambler. He gets all over the place. Wide receiver, Emmanuel Sanders, good player to catch the ball. But up front, the offensive line, the true seniors, they've got to come to play. Maybe a guest appearance also by Eric Dickerson in the backfield. Don't think so. Yeah, wouldn't that be something? Eric Dickerson, an absolutely phenomenal player. Craig James, equally as good. James Maps with his first carry brought down by Ernest Miller close to the first down line. It'll bring up third and short. Houston Cougars. Five and three on the year. Four and one in Conference U.S. play. Looking for a stop here. Willis to throw out of the backfield. Maps has it, has the first down, and he's still on his feet before he's pushed out of bounds close to the 50-yard line. Well, now the Houston Cougars starting defense. Here's Heisman Trophy Award winner Andre Ware. In this Cougar mad dog defense led by Philip Hunt, who had three sacks and four tackles for a loss against this pony football team last year. On the outside, Trent Allen, a weak outside linebacker. He'll be bringing the heat off the edge. And the little guy in the secondary, Rocky Swartz, all he does is lead this team in tackles. He'll bring the wood from the secondary. That's our Cougar defense. Andre Ware, a 1989 Heisman Trophy Award winner for this Cougar program. Delayed handoff to Myron Martin with his first carry. Rumbles out across the 45. Eric, being down on the field during warm-ups is one of my favorite things to get a feel for how teams are going to play. SMU is loose. They've come out here to have fun, play football, and I think they're going to make this a very competitive evening, not just for their coach, but for their team. Yeah, Justin Willis and the SMU Mustangs, they wanted to make an early statement to show Houston that they were going to play the full 60 minutes, that this wasn't a team that had quit. Justin Willis has a man open, and it's caught. Zach Zimmerman with the grab. Big gain inside the 25. A little trickery at the beginning of the football game. A very good idea against this active Houston defense. The misdirection, the fake reverse, and then the deep ball. Harry Simon in coverage could have made a play, but Zach Zimmerman simply took the ball away from him. Excellent execution because the play was actually covered. Pickup of 30 yards on that pitch and catch. Willis to Zimmerman. SMU winless in conference play so far this year, but they've played very well in recent weeks considering that they haven't won any games. Pass is complete. Columbus Givens another first down inside the 10. Last week, SMU, they had Tulsa on the ropes. This time they want to knock off another big dog in Houston. Just excellent execution again, a back across the backfield, holding the linebackers. Linebackers late getting deep. Columbus Givens with the catch, Rocky Schwartz on the hit. And here's SMU right at the goal line, four yards to go. 50 yards on those last two pass plays. 30 yarder to Zimmerman, a 20 yarder to Givens. Willis keeps it. Willis, touchdown, SMU. This is the read option. The quarterback simply looks at the defensive end. And when the defensive end goes up the field, he kicks the football and drives back up inside. Nice job. Beautiful drive executed by Willis. He looks at the defensive end. It ends up the field. Had he closed, he would have handed the ball to his back, James Maps. 
That's sort of the Rich Rodriguez option that everybody's running all over the country. But none better than we just saw it executed by Justin Willis. Heck of a start for SMU. Thomas Morstead, the junior kicker, no problem. That is now a SMU record, 59 consecutive point after touchdowns made. He's a good one. The coaching staff says he'll be an NFL player someday. Well, you can tell Art Bryles was concerned about this football game, number one, because SMU has given them trouble and given them fits throughout the years, even when they should have put them away. They haven't been able to do it, and they actually lost to them two years ago. Here he's coming off a conference championship. Let's go down field side now and talk to the third member of our crew, Dave Ryan. Dave? All right, Eric. Big question tonight for Houston. Who will be the starting quarterback? Will it be the sophomore Blake Joseph or the redshirt freshman Case Keenum? It will be Case Keenum. And Art Boyles doesn't tell his starter until just before kickoff who it's going to be. The coach actually made his choice yesterday after trainers cleared Keenum. He's been suffering from a sprained knee. But the coach waits until the last moment because each quarterback has been so effective. Each has started several games this year. They practice well. They play well in games. So each will see significant playing time tonight. But the starter is Keenum this evening. Thank you, Dave. That's breaking news. Case Keenum making his fourth start of the season. Blake Joseph has started five games. We will see both of them throughout the course of tonight's game. They both look terrific in warm-ups. Both of them. Kellis Cunningham will kick it off for SMU. Already on top, 7-0. Coming up and fielding it is Donnie Avery. A lot of speed out of Avery. Not able to use it as he's surrounded and dropped at the 23-yard line. There is Case Keenum, redshirt freshman out of Abilene, Texas, completing 66% of his tosses. Coach of the two quarterbacks that we're going to see, Keenum is more the runner. Blake Joseph is more the, the pure thrower. Yeah, but when your runner's completing 66%, that's pretty good. They're, they're both marvelous arms. I really enjoyed watching them warm up. And they were they were ready to play. That was clear. Terrence Ganaway is the lone back in the backfield alongside Keenum working out of that shotgun. Four receivers in the game and they give it to the tailback Ganaway who is dropped after a pickup of one of well, the Houston offensive starters. Let's go back to Andre Ware. <laughs> high-flying offense from the Houston Cougars doing it like we used to do it back in the day. The double-edged sword at quarterback Case Keenum and Blake Joseph, both guys can take you deep with the football. And they've got a little guy behind them, Anthony Allridge. They don't call a guy quick six for nothing. Might be the fastest back in the entire country. Then up front, Jeff Aykroyd making his 23rd consecutive start on the offensive line. Big boys up front, they'll push you around. Ball is loose on the field. Avery just has to jump on it. Tried the end around, and Avery lost the handle on the transition. I think this is a very difficult motivational game for the Houston coaching staff. We could tell Art Bryles was concerned. I've said that once. I'll say it again. This is a tough game to get ready for if you're Houston. That was actually an incomplete complete pass, so Art Bryles' team will take it. Still on the 24-yard line. Third down and nine. Keenum flushed. We talked about his wheels. He uses them to pick up a first down. Demond Hurst jumps on it, but not before the chains will move. Keenum's just a quarterback that the coaches say things happen when Case is in the game. This is what they mean. Things break down. Not only does he see the opening, but he makes sure that he doesn't take a lick on his injured shoulder. He gets on the ground after the first. Here's Allridge with his first carry. He's down at the 35-yard line. Now let's go to SMU's defensive starters and Craig James. On defense, the Mustangs up front better be smart and use their eyes. Houston's offense is all over the place. They'll be led by Corey Muse. He's the sack leader. The linebackers, Anthony Aldridge at Houston is fast and gets sideline to sideline. Better get ready, linebackers. And in the secondary, Brian McCann. A couple of interceptions on the year, maybe a couple of opportunities tonight. Thank you, Craig. Well, we don't know how much we're going to see of Corey Muse. He has been banged up with a groin problem. Wasn't in the starting lineup. Deep pass is complete. Jerron Harvey with the grab. Still on his feet. Inside the 20. Fighting for more yards. He's finally brought down. But not before a huge gain for the Cougars. 
Houston answering the misdirection play action. Deep ball with one of their own. A nice job of faking. Actually, the ball was underthrown to Jerron Harvey. Had it been thrown out three yards farther, he would have run under it for the touchdown. But he came back, came down with it. And Case doesn't care if it was underthrown. It's a completion, man, and they're knocking at the door. A 49-yard completion. So Houston trying to answer the score for the Mustangs on their opening drive. Allrich, nowhere to go, roped in, and it's going to be a loss of a couple. Good defensive play, Will Benia and others on the stop. Ask Phil Bennett or Jim Gush, the defensive coordinator for SMU, what they had to do to win this game. They said, we gotta, we're not going to stop the running game. We've got to contain Allridge. And so far, so good on that count. Now, Allridge, a real thorn in the side of Phil Bennett a year ago. He had two 77-yard touchdown runs in the game played on the hilltop in Dallas against the Mustangs. In total, 225 yards rushing for Allridge last year against SMU and they get it to him out of the backfield and he's stoned and pushed out of bounds by Lowry. Devin Lowry when they talk about Allridge in these parts they talk about that fantastic speed that he has talked to coach Bryles yesterday and he insisted that Allridge runs a 4 2 6 40 yard dash. That is faster than 95% of the players in the National Football League. And so far, the SMU secondary has contained him extremely well. Yeah, Andre Ware mentioned it. His nickname around here, Quick Six. Doesn't take him a long time to get in the end zone. Keenum passes complete, close to the goal line. Donnie Avery is tripped up. Devin Lowry saved a touchdown. This is the first of the tandem that we talked about in the open. Should have never been allowed inside. That's Donnie Avery on Devin Lowry. Devin Lowry's been back and forth between corner and receiver so much he can't remember which side of the ball to line up on, I imagine. But he should never have allowed Avery inside him. A beautiful catch while being tripped up. So fresh set of downs. Ball at the two-yard line. They give it to Allridge between the tackles, and he powers in. Touchdown, Cougars. Michael Blesch, number 64, the right guard, gets the key block. He just caves his man completely across, not the line of scrimmage, but to the other tackle. Beautiful job by Michael Blesch. And number 93, Chris Parham, and the gap was plenty big enough for the touch. Extra point, no problem. So the beat continues. Offense, offense, offense here in Conference USA. Well, all evening long, we'll kind of put a capper on the weekend in college football. And in case you missed it, yesterday a pretty good game played in SEC country in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Alabama's Nick Saban hosting his former team, the LSU Tigers. Picking up in the fourth quarter. The Tigers down by seven on a fourth down play. Early set weaves his way into the end zone to tie it up at 34. Next possession, John Parker Wilson. He's sacked. He loses the football. Golden opportunity for the Bayou Bengals. They cash it in. The senior, Jacob Hester, jumps over the pile, and that would be the lead that LSU does not relinquish. They win. So with that win, LSU, they're now in the driver's seat. To a certain extent, they may control their own destiny. LSU is two now in the BCS standings. They are the highest uh, the highest team with one loss. They are just a little bit ahead of Oregon. What do you think Les Miles is dreaming about that fourth and two against Kentucky? Those big, big calls come back to haunt you. They're going to have to overcome that, and they got some more to do before they get in the big one. Do you think it's they justified their position as number two ahead of an undefeated team like a Kansas Jayhawk team? Well, I think so, but I haven't seen enough of Kansas. I've been very impressed with what I have seen. They give up an awful lot of points. The points that LSU gave up was because of the turnovers. They had three turnovers in the first half. When you do that and beat Alabama and Tuscaloosa, you got a good football team. Third kickoff for the game. We have yet to play six minutes on the return. It's James Maps, and he is brought down a spinning tackle at the 20-yard line. And a flag comes down late. Right, here are some numbers from yesterday's game down in Tuscaloosa. Early due set, that big fourth down catch. He had two touchdowns in the game, and 
LSU they score the final 14 points of the game and win in the battle between well Nick Saban's former team and Nick Saban's current team. Kicking team number seven. 15 title in an automatic first half. Yeah, that's Adrian Hill, tonight's referee. And he's going to call that penalty against Houston. So our Bryles, none too pleased. SMU will start on their 36. Ball will move all the way to the 36-yard line. And the way SMU looked on their first drive, they don't need much help. Willis. Intercepted. Kenneth Fontenet with the pick. And it's a sudden change. Willis gives it back to the Cougars. Kenneth Fontenet, his third interception of the season. Fontenet, a former corner, covers like a corner, and established as the best defensive back on this team. Beautiful break on the football, and that's what happens when you got a former corner lined up at safety. He understands about change of directions and getting to the football. His third interception of the year. Turnovers have really been a problem this season for the SMU Mustangs. They give to Allridge, goes one way, tries the other, and picks up a pair. You see a little bit in, in Aldridge, Aldridge there about what his coach was talking about when he says he's not very big, at least not on the outside. You see his heart, and you see the strength in his leg, and he's not tackled by the first guy, even when he's hitting the backfield. Aldridge averaging close to seven yards per carry on the season, and that's way down from what it was last year. Last year averaged 10.1 yards per carry with 956 yards on the ground. Heck of a junior season. Pass is simply thrown away. Case Keenum had not, nothing doing. He was under pressure from Jordan Johnson. This is a D-line, uh, a defensive strategy move by SMU that works beautifully. Allridge is going to slip out of the backfield. The play is designed for him. You see 22 just sneaking out like a chicken thief there. But look who's right there with him. Demon Hurst, the middle linebacker, prevents the throw. And there is no play. That's just great defense. Demon Hurst is the man that rings the bell for this defense. Ball is loose on the ground, and it looks like SMU may have it. The ball was loose. Oh, it's going to stay with Houston. That ball was for the taking there, but Carl Barnett is able to jump on top of it. Well, those centers are good for something, and he probably felt that the snap wasn't clean, got around and got on top of the football, but that should never happen with a veteran quarterback and a veteran center, and Barnett, just a sophomore, but that you should have that center quarterback exchange down pat. Now, Coach, they're going to go for this on fourth down and 11. Well, this is the kind of, that's the kind of field position where you do this. I guess they figure they're not going to do they themselves gotta, much good if they punt it out of bounds or punt it into the uh, end zone. And now they're going to call timeout and talk about it. So Houston, they burn their first timeout. Now this is what we're playing for. Houston Cougars currently a half game ahead of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in the Conference USA West standings. Both Houston and Tulsa control their own destiny. The big game is next week. Houston, they're going to have to travel to Tulsa. And the winner of that game is going to be in the driver's seat to win the West and take on the champion of the that, East. That game might be like our Boise State Nevada game. That might be 69-67 before it's over. Two tremendous offenses. And the defenses are not bad. I mean, Houston's highly ranked in their conference defensively. But there's so many things going on on offense now. And SMU has looked good on offense tonight. Yeah, this is a scoring league, no doubt about it. There were five games played in conference yesterday. The average winning score, the winning team scored 49 points in those five games. So offensive fireworks up and down Conference USA in 2007. On fourth and 11, Keenum's pass to no one in particular. It's incomplete, and SMU will take over on downs. 
Now that's surprising to me with that much time to think and talk and knowing what the situation is to have a free blitzer and to have the quarterback drill Brian McCann free in the backfield not what you expect at all from the Houston offense. So after the interception, SMU, they stiffen and get the ball back to Myron Martin with his second carry. And he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Let's go back down to Dave. Well, Eric, I was standing on the field, pregame warm-ups with Houston coach Art Riles, talking about the quarterback situation, when abruptly he ended the conversation because the SMU players stormed midfield and stomped on the UH logo. They were pretty pumped up. Of course, Phil Bennett, their head coach, is outgoing. A lot of emotion on each side. We saw a personal foul on special teams. These teams are ready to go right now, Eric. Hey, coach, your thoughts when that happens? As Willis is going to throw. It has some time. It has a man wide open. Emmanuel Sanders, their big play guy, with a big play. Still on his feet, and he's down at the 24-yard line. You got it right, and you said their big play guy made a big play. Emmanuel Sanders left unhindered, running in a three-deep zone where the corner should have been back there with him. I beg your pardon, it's man, and somebody just busted a coverage. I couldn't imagine that it was man coverage because there was nobody with him. Wow, nice throw and catch. And the SMU offense untracked again. So SMU with three pass plays, over 20 yards already today. That one a pickup of 44. Willis to Sanders. Hand off to Myron Martin. And he has his legs taken out. All right, Coach, back to the, the stomping on the UH yeah. in the middle of the field. Stomping you on the uh, paint in the middle of the field. has There are about three people that are aware of that in this stadium. You're one, and now that you mentioned it, I'm one, and the other one is Dave Ryan. They don't care about that stuff. Um, the first time you get smoked in the mouth by that 290-pound nose guard, you're not thinking about the paint in the middle of the field. I promise you. They're thinking about football. They're thinking about trying to block somebody or make a tackle. That, that stuff goes out the window with the kickoff. What I notice is the SMU guys are enthused and ready to play, and I said that, and by golly, they are. One of the linebackers for Houston, Rodney Rido, just limped off the field. He's been replaced. Second down and three. James Max in the backfield alongside Willis. And Willis has a man. Touchdown, Columbus Gibbons. Oh, this is too easy for the Mustangs. Well, our first question has been answered. SMU, they're still playing for the coach, Bill Bennett. I'll guarantee you they're playing Ernest Miller in coverage number five. And again, a receiver gets lost just much too late. Columbus Givens with a nice concentration on the football. Justin Willis throwing it up so only his guy can get a piece of it. And of course, he obviously came down with it. So Columbus discovers the end zone for the third time this season. Extra point is good. SMU, the Mustangs, looking pretty good. Rearing up and coming out playing very well. 14-7 is our score. 4.43 remaining in the first quarter. Bread from darkness. Protected by divinity. The place I was raised, they didn't give us names. They gave us numbers. What was your number? 47. On November 21st, a sinner becomes a saint. Hitman, rated R, November 21st. These days, it seems like they're trying to protect us from everything. Roll-On protects us from odor. Coffee has a warning label. This is hot. You think we're missing the point? Let's just keep our eye on the big ball. Protect us from the things that matter, the things we can't see coming.
Yesterday's history, just a nice memory. I never think about yesterday. The only day that matters is today. Start today with Gillette Fusion Power and the confidence you get from the world's closest, most comfortable shave. Turn it on. Soothing micro pulses help you reduce friction. You'll barely feel the blades. Gillette Fusion Power. Be your best today. It's Bobby Bowden's statue. Hold your breath until we pass it. <gasps> Bobby Bowden's statue. So lifelike. Dude. Get him! Do you have accident forgiveness? Call Allstate to sign up today. Are you in good hands? Tonight's telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. The Bayou City of Houston is all lit up on a Sunday evening, and so far the scoreboard has been lit up. Here at Robertson Field, Robertson Stadium, it has already seen 21 points scored, and we haven't played 11 minutes in today's game. And SMU, they've run 12 plays. Five of them have been 13 yards or longer already today. Donnie Avery, his second return. And Avery tripped up at about the 40-yard line. That one had a chance to go the distance. Excellent drive by SMU for the second time tonight. And inexplicably, receivers wide open in the secondary. A beautiful catch there by the ever-discovering Columbus, <laughs> as my uh, partner likes to say. But a beautiful catch by Columbus Givens and a nice throw under duress by Justin Willis. Justin Willis has been the star of this game so far. The fake to Allridge. Donnie Avery double teamed and he had no chance as that pass sails deep over his head. Case Keenum still in at quarterback for Houston. Remember we're going to see Blake Joseph at some point. Devin Lowry and Brian McCann in coverage and if indeed our man Avery can run 4 2 6 so can the secondary players on the other side of the ball because he didn't run by anybody and that was just to throw it up and hope by Case Keenum. Allridge goes in motion to the right to give to Ganaway and Ganaway bottle up after a pickup of a couple. Damon Hurst with another tackle. Damon Hurst is the bell cow on the defensive side of the ball. The middle linebacker has played very well tonight in man coverage against the, the fleet back. Allridge stepping up and making tackles, taking on blockers and leading his football team. This SMU team is here playing with a vengeance tonight for whatever reason. Hurst is a senior. They say he's made his most improvement as a player between his junior and senior year. Keenum has a man. Pass complete to Harvey. Jerron Harvey is one of those athletes that you notice in warm-ups. They didn't have the jersey zone, so I, I couldn't identify him as, as a player by name, but you just see a guy like that, and he's so lean and so big, 6'5", 215, graceful, excellent hands, nice execution. He'll play at the next level, most likely. Keenum out of the gun, hands it off to Ulrich, bounces it out. And can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Monday Night Football on ESPN continues tomorrow as Ray Lewis anchors the Baltimore Ravens defense against Big Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 with Monday Night Countdown. I got to tell you, Eric, so far, you look at Art Briles' face. He understands they got, a, they got a real challenge here tonight. They're being outplayed by the guys in the white shirts that are the big underdogs in this game. They're being out physical, and those guys, those linebackers and safeties are going sideline to sideline. They have not been able to let their get their speed outside. Second down and 10, Keenum 
Wants a bunch. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Avery. Broken up by Devin Lowry. Now let's go back to the studio. Pam Ward for a Sports Center 30 at 30. Thank you, Eric. There is now only one unbeaten team in the NFL as Peyton Manning lost this fumble here. The Colts blew a 10-point fourth quarter lead, losing to the Patriots 24-20. to And the big story in the NFL individually, Adrian Peterson sets a new NFL record, 296 rushing yards as the Vikings upset the Chargers. Sports Center comes after this game, and you can stay current with ESPN News, Eric. Thank you, Pam. Oh, geez, heck of a rookie season for Adrian Peterson. Well, when we just left you, there was a pass interference call on Devin Lowry. We thought it was just good defense, but instead, he's flagged. Ball comes loose, still loose. SMU looks like they have the football, and they do. Fumble recovered by Phil Bennett's bunch, and everything's going the way of the Mustangs early in this game. Number 99, Serge Alaze is the guy that forced this fumble. And when you're not quite ready to play, you see missed center quarterback exchanges. You see balls getting knocked out. Excellent job by 99, Serge Alize there, the linebacker, knock on the ball, literally knocking it out. Recovered. Tyler Jones. By Tyler Jones, who's one of those improvised safety people. <laughs> Before last week, he was the fifth safety on this team. Willis with the ball again, already with two touchdown tosses. Looking deep, pass is caught. Aldrich Robinson, true freshman with the catch, just his seventh catch of the season, and another huge gainer for the Mustangs. Aldrich Robinson on Brandon Brinkley, number 21 Brinkley, getting picked on a bit tonight. He's actually in good shape again, but he doesn't read the eyes of the receiver. The eyes of the receiver will tell you when he's about to go for the ball and you rake it out. That did not happen. So Brinkley gets beat. And SMU very definitely the aggressor in this game on both sides of the ball. Justin Willis already with 172 yards passing on just six completions. We're just getting started. They give the ball. Emmanuel Sanders trying to get him the ball any way they possibly can, and you see why he spins out for a pickup of six yards on first down before Ernest Miller can stop him. Well, we asked Rusty Burns, the offensive coordinator for SMU, if this is your go-to guy, how many, I mean, is he really going to get to touch the ball a lot? He said, we have got to get it in his hands 10 to 15 touches. He is our go-to guy, and we're seeing now that there are a variety of ways to make that happen. Yeah, Rusty Burns, like the rest of the coaching staff, they will not be back at SMU next football season. As per usual in the college football ranks, if the head coach goes, so goes the coaching staff. It's going to be a halfback pass. James Maps to the end zone. I think he was out of play. Brandon Brickley with the catch. Was he inbounds? This is the problem when you let your back throw a ball. <laughs> He's just going to throw it. Now there are two red shirts, two white shirts. James Maps, number 20, comes across with the ball and just throws it up for grabs. Emmanuel Sanders is the intended receiver. He gets bumped in the traffic, and then Keith Fontanet makes the catch. Let's see. Well, that well, he doesn't have control. We'll have to see whether he, the officials are right there and they make the decision. He did not have control. So the call is definitive. No catch, and it's a third down and four. And SMU, they catch a break, see if they can cash it in. Willis, with those good wheels, gets himself the first down. And the ball comes loose late. Ball loose late. Rocky Schwartz dug it out. And they're going to say, well, no signal yet. Rocky Schwartz, number 20. When I studied tape of this team, he was all over the field. He's hitting people, making tackles. In this case, he makes the tackle. He gets in the bottom of the pileup, comes out with the football. The officials have yet to make a decision. Now they now do. Now they do. Houston, Houston Cougar football. football. You watch Justin Willis with the ball. He's careless when he breaks contain. 
He starts to run for the first down. He does not put it away. You've got to be like a running back, and that ball's got to be plastered to your side, to your rib cage. The ball's ripped out because it was not secured early enough. Right at the end, he put it away, but you got to do that as soon as you break contain. That's Schwartz, three forced fumbles and two fumble recoveries this year. He is a ball hawk. He's fun to watch. Schwartz was just able to rip it out. It looked right before Willis's knee hit the ground. So that's now the second turnover for SMU. And they're going to they're going to think a little bit more about this. Let's go back down to Dave Ryan. Boy, you talk about emotion on the sideline. Don't think for a second the SMU coach is Phil Bennett, who's now speaking with a referee about that fumble call. Offensive coordinator Rusty Burns do not want to win this game. They are emotional. They are intense. Rusty Burns, guys, sprinted to about the five-yard line to speak with the side judge after that call was made that the fumble did, in fact, go back to Houston. He was so upset. Timeout called here by SMU, hoping for a review of it, maybe to get it reversed. Thank you, Dave. All right, well, with the timeout on the field, time for us to catch our breath. Bill Bennett arguing his case, but I don't know if he's going to win this one. Our score, 14 to 7, but SMU, they missed a golden opportunity with that fumble just a moment ago. Rocky Schwartz and Justin Willis, they're into this game, and oh, we're just getting started. It's always there every time you need it. Making things move, breathe, helping the savers meet the saved. Air, it's a beautiful thing. Power of Energizer Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. Hey, dude. Not just hanging out, I'm watching the game. Hey, buddy. Are you talking to me? Yeah, you. What's up with your phone? Nothing. You need to skin it. Hey, skin that laptop while you're at it. Sweet. There's only one way to skin it. Go to skinit.com. Choose your device. Pick your favorite team. The NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, and many more. Or create your own at skinit.com. What am I doing? Skinning it. Can I get half of that? You could have just said no. Sports, collegiate, entertainment, fashion, and more. Go to skinit.com today. What's your skin? ESPN's College Football Prime Time. Brought to you by Hyundai. Now there are more reasons than ever to check out a new Hyundai Azera. Gillette Fusion Power. Be your best today with the world's closest, most comfortable shade. And Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? We are here on the campus of the University of Houston, John O'Quinn Field at Robertson Stadium. This has been the home of Cougar football since 1998. Before that, they played at the Astrodome, which at times was known as the warehouse for our colleague Andre Ware. Now, how did quarters. I miss that? I can't imagine how I missed that. Uh, I've always been an Andre fan. After the turnover, Houston Cougars with the football. And again, a whistle. Now we're ready to go. Case Keenum still the quarterback. We've yet to see Blake Joseph. The give to Allridge, and Allridge 
again just has nowhere to run. Wilton McCray, number five, just stepped up and took on the blocker. Nice defense by SMU. They have bottled up the speed of Allridge, and they have not let him get creases inside. And the, the highly touted twosome that we talk so much about in the open, Donnie Avery, Anthony Allridge, the double deuces, or triple deuces, whatever they are, haven't really been a factor. There's a throw, and how about that? Wow. Nice catch, Donnie Avery. Pickup of 11 yards and showing off some athletic ability there. Not the best throw we've seen, but what a remarkable feat of athleticism. Look at the one-handed catch. That's the kind of stuff you see Charles Woodson do, the former Heisman Trophy winner from Michigan who now plays for the Green Bay Packers. Those one-handed catches are things that normal mortals just can't do. Great athletic hand-eye coordination. So give Avery an A for effort on that play. Nice pitch and catch. Chains move. And a fresh set of downs. Ball at the 23-yard line. A little option. Keenum lowers his head and gets across the 30-yard line. Just a plain old double option with a pitch back. Quarterback reads the outside guy on the line of scrimmage and when he widens, he takes it up in there. I think what the, the deal is, they're going to make Keenum run with the football. They're not going to let him get that pitch back. They're not going to let him pitch it to whoever he has coming around there, which will usually be Allridge. They're going to make him run, and they're going to try to punish him. That's why he gets on the ground so with such facility. I would, too. Allridge with the carry. Oh, good stop by Will Bonilla. Not just a good stop. If we could see that, if we could see that, again, I don't know if we got it or not. Will Bonilla does a great job of keeping contained. He doesn't duck his head. He doesn't commit. He doesn't try to crush Allridge. He just holds his ground, forces him back inside, and then drives his hat through for a good tackle. On third and one, quickly, the Cougars get to the line of scrimmage, and maybe they catch SMU napping a bit, but Terrence Ganaway. Picks up and up for a first down. So that'll do it for the first 15 minutes of play. SMU, they've come to Houston all fired up. The Houston Cougars, well, they think that they have a chance as well. They're playing fantastic football. But right now, the story of this game has been SMU. E60, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. It's Endless Shrimp. Don't miss the only time of year to enjoy all the irresistible shrimp you can eat. All of your favorites are back, plus new buffalo shrimp. But Endless Shrimp ends soon at Red Lobster. Come see what's fresh today. I am your bank manager. This is a robbery down on the floor. Down on the floor! Give your money to the tellers. Getting robbed by your bank? Come to E-Trade and earn eight times the national average for savings. See you next week. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. Instant gratification has us in a stranglehold. So much so that we don't want to fix things anymore. Just replace them. Don't like your nose? Well, get a new one. Don't like your job? Get a new one. Don't like your spouse? Well, get a new one. Whatever happened to commitment? To standing by our decisions? It's Monty. Later. I'm a kind of star, I guess. I live in Hollywood, but I work on Broadway in New York. Thank you, thank you. In Tombstone, Arizona. A part of South America you might not have heard of. Hi. Hi, Klaus. And London, England. Hi, I'm in the middle of something. Hi. So I need a network that works where I live. A place called Holly York, Arizona, South of Maryland. Monty. Monty. What's the deal? The new AT&T works in more places like Holly York, Arizona, South of Maryland. They've stormed beaches and freed countries. They've raised our flag and our hope. They've been called leathernecks. They've been called devil dogs. But above all, they're called Marines. 
Margaret, it's Bill. I've just reviewed the most up-to-date figures here, and I am liking what I'm seeing. We've got a great rate, and I recommend we move forward. What do you think? I think you should book it, honey. Then you can cancel later, like always. Okie dokie. Want flexibility? Only the experts at Hotels.com let you change or cancel your reservation with no fees from us. Introducing flexible booking. No change fees, no cancellation fees. Call 800-2-HOTELS or visit Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. Uh, excuse me. Knocking off a little early, huh? Oh, the server's full again. Mm-hmm. Well, I wonder who did that. So what do you suggest I do now? Work smarter with the reliable HP ProLiant ML115 series server from CDW. It's expandable, affordable, and offers AMD dual-core Opteron processor performance. For the latest in HP servers, we're there. CDW. The headlines in the Dallas area all week long talked about the head coaching situation at SMU. Last Sunday, after losing against Tulsa, director of athletics Steve Orsini announced that Phil Bennett would not return as head coach next season. Bennett's contract runs through all of next year, but he will not be the coach of the SMU Mustangs in 2008. Obviously a difficult situation. He has decided that he wants to stay with his staff and coach the remaining games here in the regular season. But Phil Bennett is a lame duck right now at least he's getting his team to play hard for him with a 14-7 lead after the first 15 minutes of play. Houston Cougars on offense. Keenum throws. Pass is caught out in the left flat. Pick up of just a couple of yards for Donnie Avery. Well, Coach, you're the perfect person to talk to in this situation. This exact same scenario happened to you when you were coaching at Donnie Kentucky. That's correct. And what happens is that the guys make a decision. If they believe in you and if you stay true to what you've taught them, then they'll come out and play harder and better. They're not so uptight. And it's sad that sometimes this sort of thing has to happen for them to cut loose and play their maximum. But that's what's happened here with SMU. They, this team is making a statement about this coaching staff. And, and you can't help but notice it. There's, a, there's all this enthusiasm and execution that you haven't seen all year. Allridge tries to the right side, still on his feet and pushed out of bounds. I guess there's people at home, people who are fans of the SMU Mustangs, who are wondering, What's the point of, of, of firing Phil Bennett right now? Why not wait until the end of the season? Well, there's a rationale and there's a certain class about it because there's all kind of stuff that goes on in searching for the next coach, whether you're still in the job or not. They may be looking for your replacement. Orsini says, let's go ahead and be honest about it, what we're going to do so that we can honestly go ahead with the search. And I think that's exactly what's happening. Bill Bennett has been around for six seasons. Not a lot of wins, just 18 to his credit. Pass is complete down the right sideline. Donnie Avery with his biggest gainer of the day. Keenum finds Avery for a big pickup all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And this ball grossly underthrown by, under by Keenum because there's that 4-2-6 going down the sideline. He has to stop, wait, fair catch it which allows the defender to catch up and get him on the ground. Otherwise, he's long gone. Tyler Jones would have never caught him. Pick up a 47 yards on that play. Neither quarterback is able to stay up with the speed of his receivers so far. Good problem to have, especially when they go ahead and come back and catch him. Allridge picks up a couple. Coach, your thoughts on on the coaching change and staying, and Phil Bennett actually staying at the Hilltop and coaching SMU, do you think there's any thought of him leaving? Well, I, the think, regular season I think he was given the option to stay or leave, but I don't know how you teach a bunch of young men that you never quit, that you never give up, and then walk away from them when you still got time on your contract. I think you stay, you stay the course, and you teach more and better in this scenario than when you're winning every game. Option right side Allridge again having a difficult time if you say to your players there are no excuses 
and then you don't take responsibility and then you walk away when you've urged them to push themselves through every kind of demanding circumstance. That's all football is, is getting up off your rear end every time you get knocked down. So when the coach gets knocked down, they're going to check you out. I actually had one of my former players tell me in the last year, I didn't pay much attention to what you said until you got in trouble. Then I started uh -huh. listening to see if you were going to be what you had been demanding of us. That was interesting. So, um, yeah, Phil Bennett's got their attention. These guys are playing hard. 11th play of the drive. Allridge moves out of the backfield. Lines up wide left. Pass is incomplete looking for Harvey. Good stick and Harvey can't hang on. Tyler Jones on the coverage. There he is, number 41. And we came in raving about the Houston offense and justifiably so. SMU on offense has only 213 yards and 16 plays. Every time they snap the ball, they're averaging 13 plus yards. So they're playing really hard both ways. TJ Lawrence will come on and attempt a 31 yard field goal. Lawrence eight out of 13 on the year. And his kick is true. So give Houston three 12 play drive results in a field goal. And SMU's lead has been cut down to four. Let's go down in the field. Dave is standing by with Steve Orsini, the director of athletics for SMU. All right, Eric, thanks a lot, Steve. First question, four games to go in the season. You decide to make the change with Phil Bennett. Why make the change with still a few games left to go? Well, at the end of last year, we sat down. We were bowl eligible six and six, but we didn't make it. So we sat down and said, what's our goal for next year? We all agreed to be get to a bowl. So as you know, after Saturday's loss, we were mathematically out of being bowl eligible. So I felt it was time to make a change so that we can be in the best position to get the best available coach in America to come coach the Mustangs. It's early November. At this point, how would you best describe the search process? Well, it's been great. It's allowed us to organize the groups on campus. It's allowed to involve community. We've hired a search firm, and we've had great response. So I'm compiling the list, and we'll be ready to move when the time comes. How would you best describe the contributions Phil Bennett had to SMU over his six years? You know, to epitomize Phil Bennett, he's always been a class act. His student athletes have been a class act. They've graduated at a nationally leading level and uh, you know when we ask him you know would you coach our team for the rest of four games a very unusual thought and he said I wouldn't want it any other way you reached out to some of the SMU alums and fans by the internet this past week what did you tell them well you know in today's technology you know they want to you want to have a platform to say your message I just wanted to state why I did what I did what you just heard I want to thank Phil Bennett and I want to set our goals high we're aiming high to get the best available coach in America to come to SMU you. Steve, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Dave, thank you so much. I guess, Coach, I, I want your expert opinion. Steve Orsini says they want to go to bowl games. They want to win Conference USA. How realistic is it to have those lofty aspirations at a school like Southern Methodist? I think it's realistic. And I think Steve Orsini knows what has to happen. If he can get the cooperation of the administration with Gerald Turner there, I suspect that he can. Yeah, I think it's possible that they could be very competitive. And I don't think they're far from it right now. You look at this team tonight, they're playing against the conference champs, and they're playing toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. In fact, they've taken the advantage physically. They're sort of the timeline. Yeah, Phil Bennett signed an extension back in January of 2006, taking his contract to 2009 with an option. It was basically if they went to a bowl game, won seven games, that option would kick in. It didn't kick in, but he still does have a year on his contract, so he will be paid next season not to be the head coach at SMU. So Phil Bennett coaching four more games with the Mustangs. Justin Willis able to get out of bounds, picks up the first down at about the 45-yard line. There's another number that wasn't on that timeline, and it, there's been a disturbing correlation between schools that win the academic graduation rate award. SMU was 100% last year. And so Phil Bennett gets the award for being the coach of the team that wins the national championship for graduation rate, but loses his job as the football coach. I've seen that happen four times, and it's unfortunate. We don't want that correlation to continue. Willis. And that play was a bust from the beginning. Actually hits the back of a lineman. That was the center, Mitch Enright. Damn, Mitch was wide open. <laughs> 
Come on, Mitch, turn around and catch the ball. That would not be uh, advisable. Yeah, Coach, that award you're talking about, it's the uh, American Football Coaches Association Academic Achievement Award. And a season ago, Phil Bennett's team, they had a 100% graduation rate for the, the guys that had matriculated for the 2000-2001 calendar year. So they're doing a lot of things right at SMU, just well, not this, winning enough games. That's a wonderful number. That, that's, a, that's the most important thing about education. Flag is down on the field. Willis's pass Passing is too low for Columbus back. Givens. In the backfield. Flag is in the backfield. Looks like more than likely it'll be a hold on the offensive line of SMU. Number 76, Kennard Burley, lined up. Here, here's the call. Holding offense. Number 76. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot remains second down. Philip Hunt, number 53, is the bell cow up front on this defense, and he's just too much for Kennard Burley here. He beats him right now, and Burley just grabs a big handful of whatever he can get, kind of hog ties him. They're going to call that every time, but he figured it was worth the risk, obviously. Hunt, the junior from Port, or Fort Worth, Texas, leads the team in sacks and tackles for losses. Willis's pass is caught. Aldrich Robinson, his second grab. He's quickly brought down by Brandon Brinkley. Take the turnovers out of the SMU offense and, and you've got a superb showing tonight execution improvisation by Willis running out of there for first downs making big throws on the deep ball and on the out cuts this is a big play in this game strange to say this early but it is third and eight Willis with time. Pass is caught. Was he in bounds? Emmanuel Sanders does not stay in bounds with the grab. It's incomplete. It'll bring up a fourth down. What a nice job by the quarterback. Justin Willis makes a beautiful throw just a little late, just a split second late. Emmanuel Sanders, the go-to guy, comes down with the football, but with the foot six inches out of bounds. First punt of the game for either side. Thomas Morstead, not only the place kicker, but also the punter, hits a high, booming kick inside the 10, and the fair catch is made by Perry McDaniel at the five. Maybe a bit of a mental blunder. Houston, they're going to have the football. But they have a terrible field position. I think it's time I told my little bro my rules to live by. Rules. Chop. Always, always get chili on your nachos, Bel Grande. A Taco Bell classic now topped with chili. New chili cheese nachos, Bel Grande. Only at Taco Bell. No matter what, your team will look great as long as you're watching them on ESPN HD and ESPN 2 HD. This season, you'll get a new appreciation for how good a fumble can look. Fumble! Fumble is loose! Every college football game will be available in high definition. Contact your cable or satellite provider and upgrade to ESPN HD and ESPN 2 HD. College football on ESPN HD and ESPN 2 HD is presented by Pioneer Kuro HDTV. Enter a world. Beyond sight. Enter a world beyond sound. Introducing the revolutionary Kuro. The change of season means big savings at Bass Pro Shops. Save 50% on the Bass Pro 30-quart turkey fryer, now just $29.88. And Redhead Osage Thermal Cruise and Henleys are only $14.88. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here.
A sudden disability can blindside even the healthiest business. At Unum, our benefits not only help people get back on their feet, they keep your whole company running strong. Unum, better benefits at work. Welcome back, everyone. It is Sunday night. Primetime football coming your way from the Bayou City of Houston, Texas. So far, SMU looked pretty good on top of the Cougars, 14 to 10, trying to snap a six-game losing streak. And we have a new quarterback. The Cougars bring in Blake Joseph, sophomore from Bryan, Texas, into the game, replacing Case Keenum. He hands it off to Anthony Allridge for a gain of a couple on first down. This is not something that's unexpected. Blake Joseph is was expected to play a lot tonight. These two guys do really well. Case Keenum, redshirt freshman, Blake Joseph, a sophomore. Joseph throws the ball a little better than Keenum. Keenum apparently does a little more with his feet. We'll see. Joseph has started five games so far this season. And he is sworn, gets it out just in time, passes high, dangerous pass. Devin Lowry. Almost had his fingertips on that one. Damon Hurst, number 44, the middle linebacker, having a terrific game tonight. He runs right by the blockers, and that's his job. That he should scrape off on that rollout every time and be in the quarterback's face. A very poor decision by Blake Joseph to let go of that football where he threw it. He was trying to get it out of bounds, but he didn't get enough on it. Yeah, this two quarterback situation is a new thing for Art Bryles. Last four years, didn't have to think about his quarterback situation he had Kevin Cobb starting 50 consecutive games was a four year starter. How rare is that. Joseph showing off that big arm has a man Avery had a step but the pass a little bit off the mark and it'll be a three and out for the Cougars. If you watch Blake Joseph throw this football he just rears back and flings it there's no touch involved he throws it off the back foot. He is rattled immediately. He got rattled the play before. He's got his man. He's got Avery. Look at the throw. That's just rearing back and slinging it. Down in Texas, they'd say he slung it. I mean, that is not stepping up and throwing on a nice deep ball technique. Chase Turner with his first punt. It is low and takes a good Cougar bounce. And it is down at the 42 yard line. Well, a big game in the ACC last night played in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Boston College trying to hang on to the number two spot in the BCS, taking on Florida State. Matt Ryan throws a first quarter interception. That would be a theme. Still scoreless, second quarter now. Drew Weatherford throws on the run, touchdown to Preston Parker. More of the same, touchdown here. Weatherford finds to Cody Fagg. At this point, the Seminoles up 20 to 10. Last chance for Matt Ryan in BC, interception. Matt Ryan throws it to Geno Hayes. He scores the touchdown. Boston College, their first loss of the season. And with that loss, Boston College, they drop from second to eighth in the BCS standings. And what does that do to Matt Ryan's standing in the what, Heisman race? What does it do when you watch that? Do you think Florida State doesn't still have some athletes? What was the last game Boston College lost at home? Florida State two years ago. Florida State is a team, is a force to be reckoned with. And I think Matt Ryan's Heisman hopes were, were harmed terrifically. It is a political thing. When you watch that sort of duress, it's hard to think, gee, this guy's the best player in the country. But if he comes back and leads his team and they win the rest of them, he's got a shot. I know you were very enthused about the performance of Darren McFadden in Arkansas well, last night. McFadden is just one of the great players ever. I mean, and, and he's, they've had a tough year this year. And unfortunately, the Heisman is a political contest. It shouldn't be, but it is. So you got to look good when you're on national television. Myron Martin, nothing doing. And he is dropped by Kenneth Fontanet. This is the DCS standings as of just a couple of hours ago when it was released. Ohio State, they keep on keeping on. They're in the number one spot. There are three Big 12 schools in the top six Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri at four, five, and six. Who says the Big 12 is down? Yeah, but you look at the margin of difference between the one and the two and then the three, and you'll see that. Ohio State is way out ahead. Third down, Willis wants to throw, and he swarmed and sacked. Ball is loose on the field. 
Houston says they have it. No signal yet. And the Cougars come out of the pile with the football. Ernest Miller with the fumble recovery and great field position for Houston. Phillip Hunt, number 53, the fine defensive end, is becoming more and more a force in this game. Look at him. He's the guy that knocks it loose. Great pass rush, runs right by his guy. Kennard Burley this time couldn't even hold him and keep him out of there. He knocks the ball loose, and Justin Willis, Achilles heel, even with his coaches when we talked the other day, they said he's just got to stop turning the ball over. Well, tonight is not a good night in that regard. Case Keenum back in the game, pitches it out to Allridge, and Aldridge, no chance, touchdown! Quick six for Mr. Quick Six. First time this night that blinding speed of Allridge has been shown off, and the reason, no contain. They've been able to keep him bottled up and turning him back inside. This time, the speedster got loose, and he was in the secondary in a flash and gone in another flash. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 77, Taunton. The touchdown is good. 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Jeff Acroyd, right offensive tackle, inexcusable. Now, there's a job to be done here. Somebody has contained one of those three men, depending on the coverage, and nobody's there. There's no blocker. Nobody has to block. Once that guy gets a step, it looks like maybe Yori Yinga was the guy that should have been out there. He's a young player, true freshman. Understandable mistake, but it cost you six. Quick six, they call it. Extra point is good. And Andre Allrich, his second touchdown of the game, gives Houston the lead. Anthony Allrich, just blinding speed. Once he gets in that defensive secondary, it is all over. Defense, number 21. That penalty is declined to try and good. Anthony Allrich now with 10 rushing touchdowns on the year. This one an explosive 36 yarder. And the Cougars with their first lead of the night. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Hey, buddy. Hey, shake. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jack Link's Jerky, feed your wild side. Bring your favorite team home with Glidden Team Colors Paint, the true colors of true fans. Team Colors Paint, exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. NBA road trip with the NBA League Pass Early Bird Offer. Follow your favorite out-of-market teams and players as they begin their journey to the playoffs. Experience the intensity of NBA basketball at home or live online with NBA League Pass Broadband. Unbelievable! 
unbelievable! And join in the excitement and emotion of the game you love. Don't miss the NBA League Pass free preview from DirecTV October 30th to November 6th on channel 751 to 763. Don't miss a minute of the live action. Get NBA League Pass now. The Houston Cougars have taken their first lead. They're on top of SMU 17 to 14 here at Robertson Stadium. Fans getting excited on a Sunday evening. Those guys need to keep their shirts on. <laughs> they think they're being brave when it's 70 degrees. It doesn't count. And plus, guys, you need to get in the weight room if you're going to do that, buddy. Uh, Your mama's not going to be proud of you either. After the unsportsmanlike penalty, the kickoff from the 15-yard line. This is going to be great field position for Southern for SMU. James Maps takes it out to the 45-yard line. This is why Jim Gush, the defensive coordinator, talked about alignment being so important. It appears that Yuri Inga lined up to the outside, has an inside stunt. Wilton McCray has the responsibility to scrape to the outside. He gets inside out in chase position, and that's why the first 13 touches, Anthony Allridge had 25 yards on the 14th touch. He had 36 in one carry because of misalignment and missed assignment on defense. Play. Personal foul, King team, number seven. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Now that's now 30 yards of penalty yards that our Bryles' team has given up in the last two plays. Dave? Well, you talked about quick six and Andre Allridge, an amazing career he's had here at the University of Houston. He has just been tremendous. He's got sub 4, 4, 40 speed, but a big number he didn't have was the grade point average. That was trouble for Aldridge. He actually had to sit out a season back in 2003 as a redshirt in 2004. Missed the entire year with academic troubles. Got himself, though, back in academic shape. He said it was the hardest year he ever had to go through for Anthony Aldridge. Willis throws deep, has a man, passes incomplete. Sanders had it and then dropped it. Rocky Schwartz and Kenneth Fontanet combined to make him lose that football. Fontanet is a force back there. First of all, it was a poor throw. He sort of hung his receiver out to dry. Justin Willis very rightfully patted himself on the chest and took responsibility for that. But he sort of threw it up for grabs. And when his receiver went up for it, he knew he was going to take a heck of a shot. And Fontenet obliged him and knocked the ball loose. James Maps and Cedric Dorsey in the backfield with Willis. And they're going to run a little option. They give it to Maps. And Maps still on his feet. Gets inside the 35 to the 34. L. Ash on the stop. Now Justin Willis already with three turnovers through an interception in the first quarter and has fumbled the football and lost it twice. Big 91 Tate Stewart in pursuit there. Used to be 6'3", 300 pounds. Now he's down to about 260. Did a nice job of pursuing and being in on that tackle. That's tough for a nose guard to run down a back like that. Third down delayed, handoff to Dorsey. He's got the first down and then some inside the 30 down to the 26th yard line. Monday Night Football on ESPN continues tomorrow as Ray Lewis and the Baltimore Ravens take on Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers who've got Willie Parker. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown. Willie Parker may be the best unsung running back in the NFL. No one talks about him, but he puts up numbers. Shoot, I talk about him. I hear people talk about him. Okay. He's a, he's a great player. Maps passes complete to Sanders. Sanders, first down and more, all the way down to the 12-yard line before Ernest Miller brings him down. Wow, this is just beautiful. Beautiful execution, a nice throw. Emmanuel Sanders catches it on the dead run. This is what you want to do with your big leaguer so he never has to break stride. And he's up the field, and he is so graceful. He doesn't look fast, but he certainly is. 
Wow. A lot of good players on this field, both teams. I like this game. Maps with the carry. Pick up of one. I'll tell you this place so between those white lines tonight is no place for the faint of heart. There's a whole lot of hitting going on. You just saw it. headgear come popping out of there. An SMU headgear. Somebody got it knocked off. It was Mitch Enright, the center. It has been suggested that centers play too many games without helmets. You need to put that <laughs> thing on and keep it on, Mitch. There's some of us that lost them too often, maybe. <laughs> Can't tell by me. Justin Willis trying to avoid a turnover here in the red zone. Flushed. Able to get back to the line of scrimmage on good speed to get away from Rodney Rideau. Here's the stuff you don't hear or see about young running backs. Watch James Maps number 20 in the backfield. He has to step up and pick between two blitzers and he's got to pick the one that's the most dangerous. MDM it's called in the playbook. Most dangerous man. Watch this guy step up here. He's got two blitzers coming. He's got to pick up the one that's the most dangerous and it's the outside guy. You would think the inside. No. The first one to arrive. Nice job by the young player, James Maps, allowed his quarterback to escape and get the completion. So SMU, they call a timeout before a second down and nine. SMU trying to take that lead back from Houston. On well, the Big Ten battle yesterday, played in Columbus, Ohio. Jim Trussell and Ohio State hosting Wisconsin. This was a good one. Tied at 10 in the third quarter. Wisconsin, they take the lead. Tyler Donovan to Chris Presley. It's a 17-10 Badger lead. But the Buckeyes, they would answer. Ensuing drive. Chris Wells down the left side. 31 yards later, it's a touchdown tie game. That was just the beginning for Ohio State. Riding Chris Wells again, they would score 28 unanswered points, and they win going away. They stay undefeated, 38-17 the final. So Ohio State, they're tested in the second half. See, I told, you, the I told you that those guys are pretty good. Chris, Wells, big time. How come no one's talking about Chris Wells for Heisman? 169 yards and three touchdowns for Buckeyes. Not a bad idea. Willis. Pass is caught. Flag is down. It's Columbus Givens with the football. There's no signal on the field. Still no signal. The Houston defenders clapping their hands. Brandon Brinkley, number 21, body language would make it appear that something happened, that the receiver must have stepped out of bounds and come back in or some such thing. Yeah, he stepped out of bounds, came back in and caught play. He stepped out with without being Illegal forced. Touching offense, number four. Good call. The stepped out of bounds and was first to touch the bag. Good the call by the, the official. Field. That's a tough call. That's tough to see. That official's right where he's supposed to be. The foot is definitely out of bounds. Nobody forced him out. If you're forced out of bounds and come back in immediately, you can handle the football. If you go out of your own volition, you cannot come back in and make a catch. Nice call by a properly positioned and trained official. So it is a loss of down penalty, and that'll bring up a fourth down, and the field goal team will have to come on. This would be a nice place for a fake. Thomas Morstead. Booming kick, and it's no good. Wide right. Thomas Morstead, who's a good one, misses from 26 yards. When you kick from the right hash, and you're a right-footed kicker, I don't know why, but it's very difficult angle for right-footed kickers on the right hash. Should have gone for the fake. Didn't I say that? <laughs> Morstead showed off that fine right leg of his. 
Good snap, good hoe. The laces are where they're supposed to be. The kicker does that as a matter of habit because he doesn't care where it goes. It's good to him. Of course, if he'd have kept his head down so he couldn't see it, it might have been good. He actually did. He, he did pull his head up too quickly. Case Keenum is the quarterback, and he hands it to Allridge. And Allridge is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Yuri Yenga this time doing his job. Credit him for the tackle for loss. Yuri Yenga is a true freshman from Euless, Texas, who's really got potential. He's undersized, but he's quick, aggressive, and he's going to be an outstanding player. He's been in the backfield a lot tonight, and that's what you got to do with a guy like Allridge. You got to keep him bottled up, hit him in the backfield. Keenum out of the gun. They throw it out quickly to Allridge, and Allridge this time is able to get back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a yard more before Tyler Jones brings him down. Allridge is a little guy, but he has a big heart. He runs inside for the touchdown, gets on the corner, and if he ever does that, it's all over. You just can't catch him. He's too fast. I love the way Art Briles says it. He's not very big, at least not on the outside. He's very big on the inside in the heart area. Keenum wants to throw on third down and 10. Pass is caught by Donnie Avery and up for a first down. So both Allridge and Avery starting to pile up some numbers here in the first half. Eric, I swear, I think Carl Barnett is leading the quarterback on this snap, the old single wing kind of thing, when he starts to the right. Quickly, the snap, and the pitch out to Allridge. And SMU Allridge knew what was going on. They dropped him at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, well, Houston's not cooperating. When I want to run a replay, they should wait and not get back up there. Okay, now we're going to take a look and see if, if indeed. Now, that's not what I'm talking I was talking about the one before so that the center was actually leading him with a gun snap when he was going to sprint out to the right. I swear it looked like that. And that's asking a lot of Carl Barnett. He did a heck of a job on it. That's two times I think I saw that. We'll take a look and let you know later. They fake the toss. Keenum flushed. Pass is complete again to Avery. And Avery, Avery out of bounds after another first down Houston grab. Cougar. First down. You know, Phil Bennett's not the first head coach that's had a hard time stopping Donnie Avery. Well, Donnie Avery as your outlet, as your third, as your third option, not a bad third option to get you a first down. Avery with six grabs for 98 yards. Ganaway with his best run, a pickup of 12 on first down. Good drive here for the Houston Cougars. Brian McCann on the stop. This is what I was talking about. Watch, watch Carl Barnett and Blake Joseph here. Joseph starts running to the right before the ball is snapped. And the center leads him. Well, that's Case Keenum back in the game. Number seven, Case Keenum back in the game. He, it's like the old single wing. That is really sophisticated stuff between the center and the quarterback. Option out to Allridge. Good open field tackle by Devin Lowry. I am very impressed with the SMU defense. Allridge is accustomed to running up and down the field and making those 36 yard runs virtually every time he touches the ball. That's not happening tonight. He's being bottled up with one exception. He made the long run for the touchdown. And that was a defensive alignment mistake. Eighth play of the drive. Keenum steps up, throws a strike. Pass caught by Harvey. Another first down all the way to the 25 yard line. Jerron Harvey, a JC transfer. It took him a while to get a feel for the offense, but he's getting it now. Look at him clapping his hands. Come on, hurry up. I found the window. The throw was just a little bit late. He feels like had he gotten it earlier, he might have wheeled and taken it in the end zone. But he's making a real contribution. Halfback pass. 
Chris Allridge. Touchdown, Chaz Rodriguez. A little bit of everything out of Anthony Allridge. He's run for two scores, now he throws for one. So if you're Devin Lowry, number three, and you're the corner, and Allridge is coming your way, and you've got force responsibility, what do you do? You have to freeze. You have to freeze. When that happens, then Chaz Rodriguez runs right by you, and the tailback throws for a touchdown. That's virtually an indefensible play. Now well, Chaz Rodriguez picks a perfect time for his first ever collegiate catch. It's a catch and a touchdown all wrapped up in one. Congratulations. Yeah, but it's also a five yard penalty for walking off with that football. <laughs> He's been watching too much NFL. Biggest lead of the game. Allrich to Rodriguez and the Cougars up by 10. Critics call Lions for Lambs provocative. Extraordinary. A must-see. There are people out there fighting to make things better. Robert Redford, Meryl Streep, Tom Cruise. In what's certain to be the most talked about movie of the year. This is a big story. Lions for Lambs. Rated R. Only in theaters Friday. Mac and cheese snacks, huh? Really tasty. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. easy to eat with a hand, and it keeps my streak alive. What streak is that? Oh, 17 straight meals without silverware? All hands. All hands for 17 straight Wait, meals. Wait, didn't you tell me you went to some Italian place last night and got yeah. a big, big plate of spaghetti? Yeah, Andrea took me out and I got spaghetti. And the streak was... Intact. Mac and cheese snacks. New at Sonic. An old favorite served up a whole new way. Try them today or any of our other great snacks. Pay the Sonic way. Swipe your credit or my Sonic card from your car. Every day, workers across America cover our good name with dirt. Grease and mud. And you know what? We're fine with that. Dickies, a legend in work. Freedom of choice. It's what makes this wide open country of ours so great. So whether you're into paved roads, dirt roads, or no roads. Toyo makes an open country tire that's just right for you. No matter where the road takes you. I started this company with nothing. My parents gave me encouragement. That was all they could give me. Now this company is who I am. And it'll help me deliver on a promise I made to my daughter to help her start a company that would be who she is. At John Hancock, we have the insurance, investment, and retirement products to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've promised yourself. John Hancock, the future is yours. Allridge doing a little bit of everything for the Houston Cougars. He's already running two balls for touchdowns, and now he throws one for a touchdown. Now, he's not going to be employed as a passer on a regular basis, but he's very excited about this. He did make a perfect throw. We didn't get to see the end of that. We saw it in live action, but on the replay, he is so, so happy. That's his first touchdown pass, Rodriguez's first catch ever. Nice way to start. The second quarter has been all Houston Cougars. 17 0. They've outscored the Mustangs in this stanza. Jesse Henderson with the return. And Henderson brought down at the 30 yard line. Let's go down to Dave Ryan, who's standing by with some Houston royalty. All right, Billy Ray Brown is here. Steve Elkington is here. Guys, we'll have this right. This is the Houston H, correct? That is, is that that's the not this ball right way? There. No, it's okay. right there. It's that way. Right <laughs> now, there. these guys in the 80s won three national championships on the golf side, and golf, a tremendous tradition here. Steve, let's start with you. You came from Australia. What made you choose Houston coming from down under? Well, I got recruited by Coach Williams, a great coach here, and told me there was going to be a guy Thank from Sugarland, Texas, Don't named Billy Ray Brown. Brown. So, how could I? How could I pass up that? <laughs> now you live full time here in Houston. What do you think of college football? I love it. You know, being being roommates with Billy Ray and his dad played football and his brother played football here. I learned a lot about it. Actually, Billy Ray was a ball boy when I was at school. We were at school together, and 
both been our wives here, so we've, we've, we've got a lot to be thankful about you, mate. And Steve, 10 titles, of course, the 95 PGA Championship. Billy Ray, you won three titles. Your brother played, your dad played in the NFL and here in Houston. You were a ball boy. What are your memories of Houston football back in the day? It was incredible because as we broke into the conference in 1976 and we took the title and played uh, Maryland in the Cotton Bowl, my brother was playing back in 76 and, and, and beat Maryland there. It was an incredible experience to have, uh, being around football the whole time around the school, but having guys like Steve and a lot of great teammates uh, here at University of Houston has been an experience. As Steve said, we met our wives here, so it's a, it's a family ordeal here at the University of Houston. And how would you best describe those great golfers back in the 80s? I mean, three titles, all the unbelievable names, Faldo, Couples, you name it. Right. Well, you talk about the three titles when Steve and I played together for, the, for four years, but we had 16 total, which is a mass as any, more than any other college sports. And uh, it's Dave Williams, the coach that we had. He's an incredible motivator, and he was the type of guy you love playing for. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Oh, Willis fumbles twice on one play, and this time he loses it. Kenneth Fontenet falls on the loose ball, and Willis has now lost three fumbles already in the first half. Number three, Brendan Pahulu on the hit, but Willis is very careless with the football, and he's been that way all night long. He's an outstanding player. But he has not got the football awareness, and I don't mean this facetiously. He's the kind of guy that has great talent. He needs to carry a football around with him a lot. I'm serious. You, you do that, and you, you put it under your pillow at night. You pick it up in the morning. You walk around with it. People make fun of you, but you get the feel of having a ball and taking care of it. Four turnovers for SMU, all of them by Justin Willis. One interception and three fumbles lost. Terrence Ganaway with the carry. But let's don't get too jacked up about criticizing Justin. Yeah, he's had the, he's had the four turnovers, and that's real bad. But he's also made great plays, and they wouldn't have those 14 points up there without him. Houston Cougars looking for more before look, look intermission. Here. Look here. The whole team stands up and looks at the sideline. They're all taking the signal. It's not just going to be called by the QB. I don't think I've ever seen that. Alridge splits out to the left side. Keenum flushed, throws deep, has a man, passes under thrown, and it's knocked away. Looking for Donnie Avery, Devin Lowry with the pass defense. Let's go back to the studio and Pam Ward. All right, Eric, coming up soon on the Sports Center halftime report, we'll have more on the Battle of the Unbeatens between the Colts and the Patriots. Adrian Peterson had a heck of a game for the Vikings, a record breaking day, in fact, and also a shakeup in the BCS, which could be expected with Boston College losing. All that and more coming up on the Sports Center halftime report. Eric and Bill. Thank you, Pam. Now, here in Houston, a 10 point lead for Art Bryles' team, but they missed an opportunity just a moment ago. Case Keenum had Avery. But he couldn't get the ball to him at time. The pass was underthrown and knocked away. Wasn't his fault that time. He had somebody in his face. Keenum on third down. Keeps it. Gets the first down. Forward progress is going to be enough to move the chains. Devin Lowry knocked him to the ground. Yeah, but he had the first down. Then he gave it away. Came back against the grain. Again, inexperienced. Some of the things that these young quarterbacks, what they're learning, they're a work in progress, both of them. Keenum and Joseph. They're going to say that his forward progress was enough for the first down. So now they, they can bleed the clock, you'd imagine, as we have less than 90 ticks remaining here in the first half. They don't want to just run out the clock. They want some points. Every player knows the signals and has to turn and look. Movement on the line before the snap looked like Dustin Dickinson. It was Dustin. Dead gum lineman. Lineman. You don't let linemen take signals. You tell the linemen what to do. Isn't that what you do? I think Art's thinking his linemen are smarter than most of us are. No, I, I'm really impressed with the discipline of this offense and the fact that they can get those calls in. And they got these young quarterbacks. They're just going to get better and better. This quarter has been dominated by the Cougars. Keenum underneath to the tight end Mark Hafner and Hafner brought down by Devon Hurst 
but not before he gets closer to the 30 yard line. Hafner runs so well they're going to play him as a wide receiver some he's 6 3 2 30. They'll get an unbalanced and they'll put him out wide. I said you mean flexing. They said no. No I mean uh, we're talking about they're going to play him as a wide receiver but he's that fast and has nice hands. That was Hafner's first catch of the game. Houston calls timeout with under a minute remaining here in the first half. Turnovers have been the bane of the existence of Justin Willis. His coaches even brought it up in our interviews with them. It's a very Hard thing to describe the way a quarterback has to be aware of the football and put it away and keep it away so that it does not quarterbacks go all the way through seasons without the ball coming out once. It's amazing the ones that are good at it and I'm sure Justin will progress but that's going to have to be a major emphasis for him as he moves along through his career. He has great talent. He's got to take care of the ball. Keenum has the pass dropped. Avery. Couldn't hang on. Jonathan <laughs> Lindley kind of helped the cause as he gave him a little bit of a jolt. Yeah, but I think I think Avery read the coverage and saw that it was going to be a hard corner and he knew what was going to happen as soon as the ball came his way. I think maybe he was thinking I'm going to take this shot in the back of the head so he tried to turn maybe a split second early. <laughs> To the right, Keenum extends the football, and a flag comes down late. That may be a hit out of bounds on Keenum. Now, this is a remarkable thing, and we showed it to you a few minutes ago. I hope we've got it. The quarterback actually begins to run before the ball is snapped. The center. Carl Barnett leads him to the right. Look, that ball is snapped to the right. That's an old single wing technique that gives him a full step advantage. <laughs> foul called on Will Bonilla, personal foul, a late hit. So now they go half the distance, and that's exactly what you do not want to do with this Houston offense. They have so many weapons. Another interesting thing. That the Houston offense does. Art Browse bringing everybody over to the sideline other than his big lineman, so the big guys don't have to run back and forth, just the little guys. I like that. I would have liked that a lot when I was one of those guys. We always had to go with him. He thinks of all kinds of stuff, he really does. Art Browse in Houston trying to stay in first place in Conference USA's West Division. Touchdown, Jerron Harvey. First half points for the Houston Cougars. And why was the middle of the field relatively unguarded? Look at Art Bryles creativity. Look here. Now these guys are just trying to they're, they're confused. They're trying to get lined up. Who's out there. They're pointing at each other. Who's, who's supposed to go where. Meanwhile quick post. To Jerron Harvey for the touchdown. Beautiful work. Extra point skids through off the foot of T.J. Lawrence, and it is now a 24-0 second quarter run for Houston. You've got to hand it to Art Bryles. He's been coaching this offense a long, long time. He's got so many things that would appear to be gimmicky. Look at this. That's not a gimmick. That is just very difficult to line up when you've never seen that formation. You don't know how to get lined up. So the middle of the field is left open. We're trying to play zone. You got three guys that are trying to figure out what to do with those three guys that are stacked. And he's got a whole series of plays from that look. Art Browse's offense leads Conference USA with 37 points per game. They have 31 already in the first half. And remember when this game started we talked about how SMU's defense was stopping them and how Avery had 13 touches for 25 yards. That's almost nothing for him. But they just keep pounding at you. They really expect to get you in the fourth quarter while well, they've gotten SMU in the second. 
How about this for a two minute drill seven plays 49 yards capped off for the touchdown to Jerron Harvey his third of the season. Houston they don't need much help but they've scored 17 points off the four SMU turnovers. Up back takes the football. And brings it out across the 35. Andrew McKinney picked up the football rare carry for Mr. McKinney. And now what's the situation for SMU down 17 points with 40 ticks. Do they do anything or just take a knee. Well you absolutely I think to keep your team motivated you got to try to do something. You just have to get in Justin Willis's face. He's gotten shaken up. He got mad and he hasn't been able to take care of the football. Willis is passes behind Zach Sledge and incomplete. He started the game throwing and playing brilliantly. He got into a sort of a back and forth with Rocky Schwartz early after that first fumble recovery. He got angry. We saw him on the sideline kind of bouncing around getting in people's faces and for a quarterback sometimes that unnerves you and you don't play like you should. Martin with the delayed handoff. Out to the 41. Now that looks like a very conservative call, but what you do many times, especially if your quarterback's obviously rattled and that last throw was not accurate, you try to a draw and sometimes you pop it. You pop it for 25 yards and you run up there and, and you throw it in the end zone. That's not what happened. They're going to let it run out now. Should be the final play of the first half. Willis airs it out right side. Nobody home. That'll do it. Art Bryles, Houston Cougars. They run up 24 straight points and they lead SMU at the half by 17. Let's go down to the Coach field Bennett, where first Dave Ryan is standing by with Coach Bennett. All right, Eric. Coach Bennett, the first half you had a chance to coach after the news of your dismissal. What was that like? <laughs> it's coaching. That's what it is. That's what I do. You know, you get a chance to compete. These players get a chance to compete, and that's what you do. Your players seem to really play hard, and the emotion of an 18 to 20 year old kid, you never know how they're going to respond. How do you feel they played out there? Well, I think they played hard, but you know, right now we've turned the ball over too many times. We've had some great opportunities. Our challenge right now is to come out the second half. We move the ball, uh, get them stopped on third down, has been a nemesis, and, and come out. Our character will be seeing the, the second half here. Four turnovers in the first half. Justin Wills, trouble hanging on to the ball. What will you tell him specifically? Well, you, you know, he's a good player. You just got to tell him that, you know, I told him it's like a, a pitcher. You give up a couple home runs, you get over it, and you go on. The game's not over, and, you know, been stranger things happen, and, and we got to come out ready to play. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Well, our halftime score, Houston 31, SMU 14. Now let's join Pam Ward for Sports Center at halftime. Thank you, Eric, and welcome to the Sports Center Halftime Report. Coming up, we will take a look at games in the National Football League. The biggest matchup of all is the Colts took on the Patriots, both of them unbeaten, and, of course, a rematch of the AFC Championship game, and it is Sunday. That means the BCS standings have been released. We will also take a look at the latest standings. Ohio State, sure to be number one, but a new number two now that Boston College has fallen. All that and a whole lot more coming up on the Sports Center Halftime Report. Cool, crispy melt pizza. Yep, melted cheese between two crispy crusts. Wait, crispy and melty? That's two completely different things. I know, you got one thing, then boom, something totally different. Yeah, and then back again. Two things in one, like in perfect, perfect harmony. harmony. Uh-huh. Domino's new crispy melt pizza. Melted cheese and a topping between two crispy crusts. Get a medium for just $9.99. Call or order online. Is the new fuel-injected Yamaha Rhino 700 the world's most reliable workhorse? Or the ultimate off-road explorer? Yes. The all-new Yamaha Rhino 700 FI. No matter how you slice it, it's the ultimate side-by-side. 
This is Conference USA, home to talented student athletes from 12 great universities. Every year, the competition within these walls gets tougher. The rivalries get more intense. It pushes these young men and women to become smarter athletes and stronger students. Pride and respect run deep in our house. Welcome to Conference USA. Competition lives here. Hey, dude. I'm just hanging out. I'm watching the game. Hey, buddy. Are you talking to me? Yeah, you. What's up with your phone? Nothing. You need to skin it. Hey, skin that laptop while you're at it. Sweet. There's only one way to skin it. Go to skinit.com. Choose your device. Pick your favorite team. The NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, and many more. Or create your own at skinit.com. What am I doing? Skinning it. Can I get half of that? You could have just said no. Sports, collegiate, entertainment, fashion, and more. Go to skinit.com today. What's your skin? The coach may be new, but the faces are familiar. Led by Big Ben, the Steelers are back in a familiar spot. Division leaders. It's been a troubled start for Baltimore. Can Ray and the Ravens turn things around? Steelers, Ravens for the division lead at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Sunday afternoon football was the marquee matchup in the NFL so far this year. The last two unbeaten teams as the Patriots took on the Colts. The Patriots, many of them, including Tom Brady, just stinging from the AFC Championship game loss last year. Less than three minutes left to go. The Colts are trailing, and then on third and nine, Peyton Manning goes down. Roosevelt Colvin picks it up. That is it. Manning and the Colts lose it 24 to 20. Tom Brady threw two of his three touchdown passes in the closing minutes as the Pats overcame a 10-point fourth quarter deficit. So the Patriots go to 9-0. They have a bye this weekend, then play in Buffalo, trying to become the first unbeaten team since the Dolphins in 1972. Obviously a tough loss for Peyton Manning. Uh, you know, they get into the X's and O's. They, they have excellent players. They uh, uh, made some good plays on uh, defense, and uh, uh, it's always a, a challenge when you play against them. They're a damn good team, so it's it's a win on the road against a team that's uh, undefeated and playing great and won 12 straight and 13 at home uh, straight. So uh, it was a battle. Tom Brady passed for less than 100 yards and only one touchdown through three quarters today as his team was down 13 to 10. But then came the fourth quarter, Brady time. 70% of his passes nearly for 158 yards and two scores as the Patriots came back to win. The day's best individual performance belonged to Adrian Peterson. The rookie out of Oklahoma scored on runs of 164 and 46 yards as he set a new NFL record with 296 yards on the ground as Minnesota upset the Chargers 35 to 17. Peterson averaged 9.9 yards per carry on 30 attempts. And afterwards, Adrian said he had no idea how many yards he was piling up. Oh, no. You know, I was out playing ball. You know, I wasn't thinking about the record at all. Um, you know, we was doing a good job just pounding the ball. And, you know, that's one thing we've been saying all week, it just finished. So that's all I was thinking about. Those guys up front did a great job of creating holes. And, uh, you know, I can't thank the receivers for, you know, the great blocks they made downfield. So. When did you know you had the record? Um, I want to say it was um, in the last couple of plays. Um, you know, somebody came up and told me. So, you know, I was excited. But, uh, you know, we had to finish the game. He is all smiles and should be as he breaks Jamal Lewis's record by only one yard. Jamal set that when he was with the Ravens just four seasons ago. Peterson had 253 of his 296 yards in the second half. He's the first rookie in NFL history with two 200-yard games in the same season. Dallas leading Philly 21-7 at the half. Brett Favre now has beaten every team in the NFL. After Green Bay beat Kansas City, Drew B. Brees, three touchdowns for New Orleans. Cleveland won on a 25-yard Phil Dawson field goal in overtime. Uh, Tennessee won three straight now. They had seven sacks in this game in the win over Carolina. The Lions now six and two, twice as many wins as last year. Marshawn Lynch ran for 153 yards in Buffalo's win. Chad Johnson 
hurt his neck but has been released from the hospital and flew home with his team. And the Texans snap a three-game losing streak. We'll be back with more. 240 miles above the Earth when IMAX needed to power their camera. They trusted Duracell. And if you think advanced technology is only for outer space, consider this. Down here, now you can take up to 5,000 pictures over the life of two batteries. New Duracell rechargeables. Recharge in just 15 minutes. Their rechargeables reinvented. So whether it's some amazing shots today or you're gazing a little further into the future, it just has to work. Duracell. Trusted everywhere. Good morning. I am your bank manager. This is a robbery down on the floor. What did he just say? I said, down on the floor! Now just give your money to the teller. Getting robbed by your bank? Lady, don't be a hero. Come to E-Trade and earn 4.70% on your savings. Eight times the national average, plus no fees, no minimums. I would like to thank all of you for banking with us. I'll see you next week. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. Honey, what do you say we invite my parents to visit for the holidays? Yes! Great. And maybe we can fix up the house some. All right! Yeah, a new vanity in the guest bathroom, a new chandelier, new area rug, and maybe we can paint the walls a nice ochre. Oh, come on! Okay, it doesn't have to be ochre. This year, you can create a warmer, more inviting home for your holiday guests. Get started now at the Home Depot. Go to Home Depot. Go, 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 go! New BCS standings are out. Ohio State unbeaten. Still number one. LSU goes over Boston College into second with BC's loss to Florida State. Oregon goes from fifth to third with an impressive win over previously unbeaten Arizona State. Kansas goes from eighth to fourth. Oklahoma now fifth. Missouri sixth. So half of the top six come from the Big 12. BC goes from second all the way down to eighth. Arizona State from fourth to ninth. Georgia stays put at number 10. To break it all down and make some sense out of it, here's Kirk Herbstreit with Stan Verrett. And College Game Day's Kirk Herbstreit joins us now. Kirk, LSU and Oregon top the list of one-loss teams, and they move into the top three now. What do you think about each team's chances to get into the title game, starting with LSU? Well, as you guys know, I, you continue to look at LSU as one of the most talented teams in the country. They continue to get tested, but they find ways to win games. And right now, with Boston College losing, LSU has put themselves in a position where the bulk of their schedule is behind them. They still have some tough games coming up down the road with Arkansas uh, coming up after Thanksgiving and probably uh, an SEC championship game. But I think LSU has got to be uh, pretty, uh, pretty fired up to know that they're a few games away from getting an opportunity to basically play a home game game in the uh, Sugar Bowl uh, to play for the national championship and I don't think Oregon will lose either and Oregon right now I know they're thinking about national championship but what about the possibility of getting into a game where you have uh, a chance to play in Pasadena that's always huge mm -hmm. now you talk about tough games coming up after they spoke Nebraska Kansas is up to number four they still have a high caliber opponent in number six Missouri in the regular season schedule. The winner of that game could get number five Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. What about the Jayhawks chances to possibly leapfrog into the BCS title game? Well, hey, Kansas and Mark Mangino, their head coach, they've become one of the stories of the year, in my opinion, in college football. Uh, he came into this year, I think, with high hopes because he had more depth. But every coach says that when it becomes a reality, your team really starts to buy in. And I think that's where Kansas is right now. Uh, I was surprised to see their defense didn't play as well yesterday. But when you put up that many points against Nebraska, that helps you get 40 years of frustration out of the way. Todd Reesing doing a great job playing quarterback. As I said, when you have a football team that's been suffering for years the way Kansas has, they start to taste victory. They start to believe and they are becoming a dangerous team and I think they're a legitimate top five top six team right now in college football and thinking of Kansas in the top six in college football kind of tells you where we are this year in 2007 it's been a very very crazy year and if it's Kansas Missouri at the end of the year you know the winner of that game playing Oklahoma could have some significance as far as the BCS is concerned 
All right, so your top five. Let's compare your top five to the BCS top five. Well, I know, again, I, I've loved Kansas all year, and I know they're up there, but I have West Virginia. I think West Virginia right now is playing as well as anybody in college football. They're healthy. Their defense has really made a difference to complement Steve Slayton and Pat White. Oklahoma, I have at number four. I, I thought they got back on track yesterday, really took advantage of great offensive balance, and I thought they decimated a Texas A&M team. The Oregon Ducks, oh, we were in Eugene yesterday for college game day. There's not a better atmosphere in the country for a college football game than Eugene, Oregon. Dennis Dixon right now in the driver's seat for the Heisman Trophy. And, and I have LSU at two, as I just said earlier. If the LSU Tigers win out, if you look at the numbers right now, it's going to be very difficult, even if Oregon wins out, to jump LSU. So LSU, you can start to see some, some hope here at the end of the stretch of a very difficult season where they can think about getting to that national championship game. And Ohio State. Ohio State is probably been the most consistent team all year long. People have knocked their schedule. The last two weeks, the bar has been raised and the Buckeyes have answered the bell playing great offense. Defense took a bit of a hit yesterday against Wisconsin, but uh, if the Bucs went out these the next two games, they'll be in the championship game, more than likely playing LSU on their home turf. All right, Kirk, and as we've seen week after week, it's all subject to change. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> This game is 31-14 in favor of Houston at the half. Anthony, Anthony Allridge has run for two scores and passed for another. We have more coming up here on the Sports Center Halftime Report. I'm the biggest, baddest mucus. There's a new sheriff in town to drive your toughest mucus out. New Maximum Strength Mucinex. One pill has the most mucus-fighting medicine to get rid of chest congestion for 12 hours. New Maximum Strength Mucinex in. Mucus out. Hey, guys, they were out of Snickers. No! But I got these Snickers Dark Bars instead. Yeah! Well, I married my dream girl, I married my dream girl, but she didn't tell me her credit was bad. So now instead of living in a pleasant suburb, we're living in the basement at her mom and dad's. No, we can't get a loan for a respectable home just because my girl defaulted on some old credit card. If we'd gone to freecreditreport.com, I'd be a happy bachelor with a dog and a yard. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. 29 touchdowns. Not Doak, not Meredith, not even the Pony Express. Until this kid, no Mustang had ever scored 29 touchdowns in one season. You'd be having fun too, if you had a QB that good. Pony up. Sunday with your favorite teams and players with NFL Sunday Ticket only on DirecTV. Order now for $90 off the regular season price and get free super fast. Sunday is my day with you. The playoff pushes on. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS today. I'm blue every Monday thinking over Sunday that one day when I'm Spend Sunday with your favorite teams and players with NFL Sunday Ticket only on DirecTV. Order now for $90 off the regular season price and get free super fast. Sunday is my day with you. The playoff pushes on. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS today. Cup Series at the Texas Motor Speedway, the third of the last race of the season. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson battling for position. Johnson won the fight for fourth, passing the 24 car on the outside. Lap 19, Gordon in first gets a points bonus for leading the race. Fast forward to lap 105. It's Johnson and Gordon, the Henrik teammates battling. As we see Gordon first get into first place to lead the race. He and Johnson are Hendrick teammates. They continue to battle now in lap 105. Johnson going to pass Jeff Gordon on the inside for seventh place. And then lap 218, trouble on turn four. Number 20, Tony Stewart collides with the number 16 car of Greg Bipple. And there's a lot of trouble. Take another look. Jeff Gordon 
Telestrated there in the spot. Shadow out in front of the wreck. Lucky not to be involved in it. Racers then pit under caution. And in the final lap, Jimmy Johnson is going to come away with the lead. And Jimmy Johnson will win this race by the slimmest of mar margins. He had a side-by-side -side duel with Matt Kenseth. And then Johnson wins to grab his third straight win on the circuit with just two races to go. Johnson has taken away the cup points lead from Jeff Gordon in the chase for the championship. Johnson, the reigning cup champion, raced a nine-point deficit, moved up to this 30-point lead over Gordon, who finished seventh today, heading to Phoenix next weekend. Johnson, by the way, won over Kenseth by 94 hundredths of a second. That's only 10 car lengths. University of Arizona men's basketball coach Lute Olson has requested and been given a leave of absence due to a personal matter that is not health related. Assistant coach Kevin O'Neill will handle his duties in his absence. Much more football coming up from Houston. Anthony Aldridge is a special player. This is his touchdown pass to Chaz Rodriguez. They have a big 31 to 14 lead. Second half action coming up. Life is busy, but some people seem to get more done than others. Multitaskers. And when the Palm Central was designed, Sprint thought of these people. Then we gave it Sprint speed. You can email, text, chat, go online so fast. People may wonder how many of you there really are. <laughs> Introducing the Palm Centro only from Sprint for just $99.99 on the fastest national mobile broadband network. Multitask at Sprint speed. The Boston Red Sox have won the World Series title. Celebrate with Sports Illustrated's exclusive championship package, including the official 2007 World Series DVD and SI's limited edition hardcover commemorative book. Relive the Red Sox postseason heroics with these two great gifts featuring amazing MLB Productions video and SI's incredible writing and photography. Go to SITVoffer.com or call now to get both free with your paid subscription. 56 issues for only a dollar 75 an issue save over 55 percent off the cover price use your credit card and you'll also get this set of three officially licensed championship baseballs honoring each step of the red sox postseason run this exclusive set comes with special display stand go to sitvoffer.com or call now to get the official dvd the si commemorative book and the collectible baseball set this limited championship package is only available from sports illustrated call or go online now This is Conference USA, home to strong students and smart athletes from 12 great universities. Come on, let's go. Together, they're building traditions of competition and rivalry that will continue for generations. They are ready to compete and play hard for their loyal fans. Sportsmanship and commitment to excellence run deep in our house. Welcome to Conference USA. Sportsmanship lives here. The band here in Houston, they have had a lot to, to bang the drum about. A lot of offense, of course. This is Conference USA. The offense always comes first in CUSA. Art Bryles, he's got a secret weapon that's not so secret anymore. Anthony Ulrich, three touchdowns, two by land and one by air. And after 30 minutes of play, the Houston Cougars on top of the SMU Mustangs by 17. 31-14 is our score. Big game for Houston as they try and stay in first place in Conference USA's West Division. Bill Bennett and SMU trying to snap a six-game losing streak. Here are your numbers from the first half. Here's the one that matters. The four turnovers made all the difference. You let Houston's offense back out there four times with field position when they wouldn't have been there had you not turned the ball over. And maybe you get more points. It's all the difference in the world. Justin Willis threw an interception, lost three fumbles. He will have to lie in wait as the Houston Cougars will start with the football here in the third quarter. McDaniel from the three. Perry McDaniel with the return, and he is brought down at the 25-yard line. That is where Houston will begin play. 29 on the attack of the race is 
Anthony Alridge, number 22, can beat you so many ways. Inside running, driving for the goal line. Outside running, exploiting a defensive area, 36 yards for the touchdown. And yes, he even throws the football. And it may not look pretty, but it's right on the mark. Deadly competitor. You want him on your side. Case Keenum is the quarterback to begin the third quarter. He hands off to Allridge, who rumbles forward for seven, maybe eight yards. I don't know when I've seen anybody Allridge's size do as many things as he does to win football games. I guess Warwick Dunn would be the guy that I would think of who's such a great player for the Falcons now, such a great human being as well. And the good thing about Avery and Allridge, according to their coaches, is they're also quality human beings and good leaders. Second down and two. The give to the backup tailback. This is Ganaway and Ganaway with a good long run out across the 40. And the chains will move. Let's go down to Dave. All right, Eric did speak with Art Browse, the head coach of Houston a few moments ago. He's as intense as ever. He's not going to give up on the fact they've got a big lead here at half. He wants to win the second half and stay as intense, playing as hard as possible. He said the last time I checked, we don't get any awards for winning a game after 30 minutes. I asked him about all the turnovers, how they're able to get to Justin Wills, caused four turnovers in the first half. He said, we are playing hard. We're going to continue to play hard. He's ready. <laughs> that sounds like him. Little flip out, left-hand side. Perry McDaniel with the grab. Oh, man, he is pushed out hard by Jonathan Lindley, but not before he gets another first down for Houston. This is a very important game for the Cougars. They're trying to stay one step ahead of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in the West Division of Conference USA. The big game in the West will be played next week up in Tulsa. That is when Houston travels to take on Tulsa on their home field. Both Houston and Tulsa control their own destiny. So basically, if any team wins out, they will win the West and have the right to play the East in the championship game. Ulrich inside the five. Another huge explosive play for Ulrich all the way down to the three-yard line. And a great job of blocking by Jake Ebner, number 38, out in front from the fullback position. You see him on Will Bonilla. And you give an inch, and he takes a mile. Aldridge reading beautifully, showing not only is he fast, but he's patient, and he has excellent peripheral vision. A 45-yard gain for Aldridge. He's over the century mark. And off to Gataway. Not much doing there. He's brought down by Yuri Yenga. First man to grab a hold of him. Five straight 100-yard games for the senior from Denton, Texas. Well, I don't think he even counts them in his scrapbook unless he gets 200. Yeah, he's got four he's got in four, his career. Four 200-yard games. Another thing about Art Bryles, he, he is, doesn't have a whole lot of mercy about it. <laughs> Keenum. Another good play. DeMond Hurst and Jordan Johnson combined, and a flag comes down late. Yeah, I, I think we're seeing SMU frustrated, maybe hitting a little bit late. I don't know. It looked like maybe that happened, or maybe a face mask. We'll see. After the play, personal foul, offense, number 73, late hit, 15 yard penalty in the down counts, third down. Yeah. That's the second infraction against Dustin Dickinson. Dustin Dickinson not having his brain completely screwed on tonight. If indeed he did take a late shot. Yeah, right in the back. You hit 48 right in the back, Dustin. Guess what? They're going to call you every single time. You're a Yinga. You run right up his back, and you're down inside the five, but now you're not. All the way back out to the 20-yard line where the ball is spotted. Dustin's going to have a real long day in the film room with Art Bryles a couple of days from now. It's not going to be fun at all. Keenum in trouble, and he goes down. 
Oh, this is going to take him all the way out of field goal range, or at least the edge of field goal range. Ryan Leonard, the true freshman, combining with Jordan Johnson on the sack. And they go from being inside the five all the way out to the 34. But what you've got is a stunt inside. Jordan Johnson starts out at the end. The tackle comes out. It's called a T.E. stunt for obvious reasons. The tackle out the end loops up inside. Not picked up. Now Ryan Leonard appears to be the player who's down. Yeah, it looks like maybe he got. No, no, it's Jordan Johnson who's down and Ryan Leonard, the true freshman, maybe bumped into him. Let's see here. Oh my gosh, yeah, folded his knee up under him. But he's going to be fine. Looks like he's. Uh... Well, Monday Night Football and ESPN continues tomorrow night. It'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown. Steelers, they look to be the, uh, you know, the talk of the AFC North. They are playing fantastic football. On her first year head coach Mike Tomlin trying to keep on keeping on against Ray Lewis and the Ravens. And now the field goal unit will come on. This is TJ Lawrence and this is no gimme. This is going to be a 51 yard attempt. Remember Houston they were inside the five and the penalty of a 15 yard variety and then the sack pushes them all the way back out to the 34 yard line. And SMU, they have to call timeout as Phil Bennett doesn't like the alignment. Well, let's take you back yesterday to the game played in South Bend, Indiana. Charlie Weiss in Notre Dame extended to overtime against Navy. First overtime, Duval Kamara makes the catch, put it in a second overtime. This is now the third OT. Reggie Campbell with the touchdown. Navy now they have to go for two, and they get it. Campbell with the grab puts Navy up by eight. Notre Dame with a chance to answer. Travis Thomas gets in for the first six. Now they need the two. They call the same man's number. And Thomas, this time, he's stoned, he's dropped, and Navy, they defeat Notre Dame 46 to 44. Yeah, Paul Johnson, the head coach for Navy. All kinds of excited. He should be. 51 yard field goal attempt is off to the left. No good. And that would have been a new career high for TJ Lawrence. And instead, it goes by the wayside. So a break for Phil Bennett's team. Let's talk about that game, coach. Uh, we talked about Notre Dame and Navy, and, and Notre Dame losing for the first time in 44 years against Navy. Charlie Weiss. All kinds of trouble still with just one year for the Fighting Irish. Everybody oh. predicted that this would be a tough year for Notre Dame. I don't think anybody thought it would be quite this bad. The talent level is down. The morale seems to be down. They can't stop anybody on defense. And when you can't, and, and with true freshman quarterbacks, it's tough to play that way. Just very difficult, no matter how smart you are. Pass is complete. This is Emmanuel Sanders. Do you see any silver lining in the clouds for Charlie Weiss? And Notre oh, yeah, Dame? yeah, yeah. I see the silver lining is that you're at Notre Dame and you're going to have great players. There's certain places that are going to attract great players. When we were at Alabama, the, the player of the year in the state of New York called us. We recruited him. His, I mean, we did, he recruited us. We recruited him after he called us. Derek Lassick is his name. He was most valuable player in the Sugar Bowl when Alabama won the national championship years later. Well, that's what happens at Notre Dame, Alabama, and places like that. Justin Willis. Put the ball away, Justin. He does, and he gets it up for the first down. Talk about a topsy-turvy year in college football. Notre Dame, one and eight. Nebraska, four and six. Miami, the Hurricanes, just five and four. Those three schools normally powers each and every year. And they will be powers again for the reason I just mentioned. There, there are traditions that refill themselves. And when you get the right combination, a coaching staff that's approved of by the alumni and a good administration, they come back. Man is open, and it's a complete Zach Sledge. Someone forgot about him, and Sledge is going to just mosey into the end zone for an easy six points for the Mustangs. Now, I can't wait to see that. Alan Waddell, the fine defensive coordinator for the Houston Cougars, did not have this in mind when they got lined up. 
and it's almost impossible to see this. All, all I can say is it's a blown coverage. It looks like Tim Monroe was the guy that was responsible. Number 84 Zach Sledge just runs a go and there's nobody home. It, I, it looked like a two deep and Monroe coming off the hash and he is a sophomore hadn't played much and he just took a poor angle. Sledge's fifth touchdown of the season and that snaps a 24 point run for the Houston Cougars. There is a flag down on the field on the extra point try that was good. We'll have to sort it out. And don't look now but that 51 yard touchdown pass from Justin Willis to Zach Sledge and we've got a game once again. Yes sir. I'm, uh, I've been saying all night SMU's playing hard. They haven't been playing real smart but they've been playing hard. And if you keep playing hard and, and eliminate your mistakes. Offside, defense. That penalty is declined. The try is good. Timeout. So Justin Willis just in time making this thing a game once again. Bill Bennett's crew down by just 10. Plenty of time remaining. Every hero has a choice. Yours is which three toppings. Introducing Papa John Super Hero XL3 Pizza. Your choice of any three toppings. And 30% larger than our large. It's a super value at just $12.99. Including a $3 off coupon for Spider-Man 3 on DVD. Call or order on the web. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> See how many times I have to tell you, don't leave these on the beach. Yeah. Wherever business takes you, take the Lenovo ThinkPad T61 from CDW. Featuring the latest wireless technology, this thin and lightweight performer goes wherever you do. For the latest in Lenovo notebooks, we're there. CDW. It's a home insurance company. They call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. Here's my dream for this great land. Comfort for all in tanks and sweatpants. A world without labels would set us free. No ties or heels from sea to shine and sea. This is how I One of the greatest to ever play in these parts, Andre Ware, winner of the 1989 Heisman Award. There he is. That is a, uh, a picture of Andre. It's, it's in the stadium at all times. There's a replica of his Heisman Trophy that is always housed in the locker room here at Robertson Stadium. And it is hard to believe, but folks, this, this, this could be the, the, the stat of the night. Andre Ware, you look at the record books, you're not going to find him for the most part here for the University of Houston. He has not one passing record remaining. He's got second place in a lot of them. David Klingler basically <laughs> just ripped him out of there. And what David Klingler didn't take down, Kevin Cobb took away. Yep. The run and shoot, and then Kevin Cobb with the Art Briles spread offense. <clears throat> it's a new era. And as great as Andre was, the numbers are bigger now. But Andre will always have that Heisman Trophy. That is something that no one but the player in the history of the Houston Cougar football team has ever won. Houston trying to get that momentum back. Perry McDaniel with his second return of the second half. Gets out across the 20-yard line. Let's go back down to Dave. 
Eric, you would not think for a second that SMU is a team that's got a 1-7 record, 0-4 in Conference USA, and their coach, Phil Bennett, is leaving after the season. This is a very relaxed team. Justin Willis, their quarterback, after the TD pass to Zach Sledge, congratulating the offensive line for good protection, blocking on that play, allowing him time to throw, and having fun with teammates, joking around down here, guys. This is a loose, relaxed team at the moment. Thank that's, you, Dave. Now, coach, are you surprised at how they're that's playing? That's exactly how they were in warm-ups. No, we, I said that at the beginning. That's how they're going to play. They're playing loose and aggressive, and, and of course, Justin's gotten too loose, and uh, now they've just gotten flagged for another foul or something or other. It's a 15-yard unsportsmanlike yeah. conduct penalty that puts the ball all the way out to the 36-yard line. I think it might have been called on Bennett. He might have been. He might have said something the official didn't like. Case Keenum still is the quarterback. Hands it off to Terrence Ganaway, and Ganaway rumbles forward for a pickup of 10. You gotta be careful how you talk to those fellas. If they got those flags, you don't have a flag. There's not a thing you can do when they walk that stuff off. These two offenses moving up and down the field. Excellent statistical help for us tonight. 13 first downs for SMU in 39 plays. That's a first down every three plays. Houston has actually improved their ratio. At one point, when we started this drive, they had 20 first downs and 57 plays, a little bit better than one in three. All Ridge, it's going to be a loss of two. Discretion is the better part of valor, after all. And Aldridge actually got on the ground. I hadn't seen him do that. He usually pours it up in there and just gets what he can. He decided he'd come back to fight another day. Let's see if we can think another, of another cliche. Sure, I can. I'm known for him. Coming up at the 10 minute mark, third quarter. Aldridge splits out, trips to the left hand side. Keenum. Over to Avery. Oh, Avery was a broken tackle away from bursting down the sideline. Tyler Jones just able to hang on. We talked about the fact that there's going to be an entire package. This ball is coming this way. The last one we saw in this formation went to the post. All right. So they're not going to. He looks left and then comes back to the right with a little hitch. And there's got to be man coverage because they've got too many people on the other side of the field to allow you to zone up or to double the speedy Avery. Option, all rich. And again, he's dropped for a loss. Tyler Jones with another tackle. Jones has been impressive. Yeah, Jones has done a good job. He's got a fumble recovery. Pass broken up, 10 tackles unofficially by us, and one tackle for loss. So Jones has been a force back there. And again, a couple of weeks ago, he was the fifth safety. He was a special teams guy. He's, he's happy to get on the field. He's doing a good job. So the punt team will have to come on and an give odd, SMU another opportunity. It's an odd looking thing with Houston. Just the second punt of the day. And it's going to take. An SMU roll. It'll be down at the 22 yard line. All right, we'll take a timeout. When we come back. SMU will try and score for the second consecutive drive. This week on E60, Michael Smith with Kellen Winslow Jr. Plus the Sports Guy is back. E60, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. The change of season means big savings at Bass Pro Shops. Save 50% on the Bass Pro 30-quart turkey fryer, now just $29.88. And Redhead Long Sleeve Sportsman Twill Shirts are only $14.88. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. It's Endless Shrimp. Don't miss the only time of year to enjoy all the irresistible shrimp you can eat. All of your favorites are back, plus new buffalo shrimp. But Endless Shrimp ends soon at Red Lobster. Come see what's fresh today. In the old days, shopping for car insurance meant going to company after company, filling out form after form, and getting quotes one at a time. Today, you go to one place, Progressive.com. You get the Progressive Direct rate plus those other companies' rates in about eight minutes. It's that simple. Start at Progressive.com and get all the information you need to make the best decision in about eight minutes. Go to Progressive.com today. 
What would the world be like without music? LG Mobile, a leading maker of music phones, has partnered with VH1 Save the Music, putting musical instruments back in the hands of over one million children whose music classes were cut. What would the world be like without music? We don't intend to find out. LG Mobile is proud to help save the music. LG, life's good. What's the difference between having fun and having none? The Midas Touch Maintenance Package. An oil change, tire rotation, and 45-point courtesy check. Just $29.95. Be safe. Trust the Midas Touch. Tell me how Overpriced brokers everywhere are getting their hearts broken because their customers are switching to E-Trade. Where trades are just $6.99 to $9.99. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. Oh, Jesus. Tonight's telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. We're here on the campus of the University of Houston. They have played football here at Robertson Stadium since 1998. Here, this has been their continuous home. Before that, they're at the Astrodome. Before that, they played at Rice Stadium, just a couple of miles down the road. He's now first to home of Rice University. And James Mapps still on his feet. Are you kidding? What a tough run for James Maps. Just a sophomore, he refused to go down. The best run of the night is just a little slip screen with a couple of linemen out front. Nice job of blocking right there. Really, really good job there by Kennard Burley. But the rest of it's all on. Look at Maps change direction. Wow. Balance, determination. Oh, finally, he takes a shot, knocked him out of bounds, or he might still yeah, be running. What actually, a, never was tackled. What a great run. 27 yards on that pickup. They ride him again this time. A little bit tougher sledding going through the, the middle of that line, and he has dropped at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think it's a mistake when a guy makes a run like that. It is so utterly exhausting. It's a good idea to get somebody else in the game and let him take a blow. You hand it to him again, there's a chance it may get it knocked loose because usually you're utterly exhausted after you make a run like that. He sure doesn't look phased, does he? Hardly breathing. Conditioning. Well, that's an that's a incredible athletic ability. Willis same play to the other side. This is his third consecutive touch. Not the same. Not the same legs. Those those legs just finally set up oh, the piano fell on us <laughs> right on the back. Not a bad pickup gain of six. It'll bring up a third down and short. <laughs> Phil Bennett lame duck head coach for the SMU Mustangs was told just seven days ago that he would not be back next year for the final year of his contract, but has decided to stay on for the final four games and, and coach out the season. And his team has played hard for him. Third down and three. They give it to Maps again, and Maps gets the first down. Good play. Rodney Rideau brings him down, but not before the, the sticks will move. Now, truth be told, Phil Bennett's team, they have played fairly well the last couple of weeks, even though they've lost a bunch. Lost this time, them. Houston loses contain, and they allow the, the elusive map to get the corner. Somebody here has contained, again, depending on the call. But Maps has nobody home. Turned the corner, made the first with ease. Quick pass, picks up three yards on first down. Grab is made by Columbus Givens, who had a first down back and had a touchdown back in that first half. Givens, number four, the reception, number of Houston. Here in Houston, Texas, Robertson Stadium is our venue. SMU trying to snap a six-game losing streak. Playing for Phil Bennett, who was told just a week ago that he will not be back. Right now, they're fighting gamely against the Houston Cougars, who are trying to stay in first place in Conference USA's West Division. Quick pass underneath. It's complete. Emmanuel Sanders gets the first down. And don't look now. 
but the Mustangs are knocking on that door once again. Yeah, and Justin Willis is showing what he's made of. Phil Bennett said, we're going to find out about our character in the second half. That's exactly right. I judge quarterbacks based on what they do after horrific performances. This guy turned the ball over four times in the first half. He's out there smiling, exhorting his teammates, making one great play after another, making one good call after another. He is a leader, and he's going to be a force the rest of this night. Willis blitzes on, passes high, incomplete, looking for Givens. It'll bring up a second down and 10. Let's go back to the studio. Pam Ward for Sports Center, 30 at 30. There is now just one unbeaten team left. It is New England down 10 with 10 minutes left. Tom Brady threw a pair of touchdown passes. Pats over Indy 24 to 20. And Adrian, Adrian Peterson for the Vikings. What a day. An NFL record 296 rushing yards. The Vikings surprising win over the Chargers. He averaged just under 10 yards per carry. All that and more coming up on SportsCenter after the game. You can always stay current with ESPN News. Eric. Pam, thank you so much. Adrian Peterson, just a beast. Oh, my goodness. That ball was right in the hands of Brendan Pahulu. That was just an enormous boo-boo, but it is dropped. Yeah, this is an incredible mistake by Justin Willis. I bragged on him too soon. He's got a sprint to the right, and he simply turns and throws without taking a look, and he hits Pahulu in a bad place, right at the three. Pahulu, you see why he's playing defense. Well, normally he's got decent hands. He has two interceptions as a lineman already this year. But number three, maybe it was too easy. Right in the bread basket. Third down and 10. Willis has a man open. It's a touchdown, Sledge once again. Jeez, Justin Willis, after a tough second quarter, has come out with his hair on fire here in the third. Justin Sledge running one go after another and essentially being ignored by the secondary of the Cougars. Once again, a cover two with the, with the safety. Kenneth Fontenet trying to get off the hash and taking a poor angle, and it just makes it too easy. So from a horrific play to a great play for the touchdown. Morstead, his extra point is good, and Zach Sledge, he has scored two third quarter touchdowns. SMU, the Mustangs, rampaging on a 14-0 run. They are right back in the thick of things here in Houston, Texas. From a young age, I had a passion for math. That led to my career in architecture. Still, I always wanted to one day be able to go back to my first love. And some people might call that a dream. I call it a promise. At John Hancock, we have the insurance, investment, and retirement products to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've promised yourself. John Hancock, the future is yours. This Friday comes the most exciting movie of the year. Lions for Lambs is an astounding political thriller. You won't be able to turn away. Lions for Lambs. Rated R. Worldwide Friday. Every day, workers across America cover our good name with dirt, grease, and mud. And you know what? We're fine with that. Dickies, a legend in work. Division rivals clash for control of the AFC North as Ray Lewis and the Ravens battle Big Ben and the Steelers. ESPN Monday Night. People think of GEICO, right? They think of car insurance and, of course, saving money. But sometimes that can lead even the savviest driver astray. Take, for example, the motorcycle owner. He calls GEICO wanted to save money on his car insurance only to realise that he doesn't actually own a car. Well, needless to say, he's quite embarrassed, isn't he? Doesn't matter. Geico insures motorcycles and ATVs as well. That way, no one ends up looking foolish. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Introducing the DirecTV Rewards Visa, the credit card that gives you once-in-a-lifetime rewards money can't buy. 
turn your ordinary purchases into extraordinary rewards. Imagine talking sports with your favorite athlete, dancing with celebrities at Hollywood parties, or taking your own walk on the red carpet. Earn points with every purchase. Redeem them for once-in-a-lifetime rewards. The DirecTV Rewards Visa, the credit card that gives you rewards money can't buy. ESPN, college football primetime here on Sunday night, and we've got a doozy once again. The Ponies, the Mustangs, have come down from Dallas, and they're putting up a big-time fight against the Houston Cougars. First quarter, SMU won 14-7. Houston, they just rolled in the second quarter. But here in the third, it has been all SMU. A 14-0 run they're on, led by that man, number 16, Justin Willis, and his two touchdown tosses to Zach Sledge. This time, Avery takes an E, and it'll be a ball on the 20-yard line for Houston. Dave? Eric, SMU coaches told us after Athletic Director Steve Orsini made the announcement this past Sunday that head coach Phil Bennett would not return next year. The breakout positional meetings were difficult moments later. Of all the players, quarterback Justin Willis seemed to take it the hardest. Coach Bennett said the meeting room was silent for several minutes. He gave the team about a day and a half off to recover from the news. Willis thanked his coaches for helping him become a better player and took a lot of the blame for the team team's poor record. They did tell us, though, the team got back together later in the week. Willis showing, showing those true leadership skills, really rally the troops. And guys here on the sideline, I'm watching the same sort of thing. This is a relaxed, confident leader right now, quarterback Justin Willis. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, when Dave was talking to Coach Bennett on the way off the field in the first half, Coach Bennett said, we will have our character tested in the second half. And so far, so good character-wise for the Mustangs. Jerron Harvey separated from the ball by DeMond Hurst. Well, the SMU players are making a statement about how they feel about their team. And the coaches are included as a part of that, but just a part. They understand that this is a business and that you do have to win. They understand. But they could lay down. They could transfer. They could do a lot of things. They've decided to come out and raise the level of their performance. So you take those four turnovers away the first half, and this thing is really different. There goes the ball on the ground again. Loose ball is jumped on by the quarterback, Keenum. Keenum has had far too many problems with center quarterback exchange. And that, and that for blame, you put that on the center and the quarterback. You don't ever allow either of them off the hook. That should never happen. You work on it every day. Third and 11. How often did it happen when you were snapping to Johnny Unitas? Never. Bart Starr? Almost never. <laughs> Houston up by three. Third down and ten. Keenan with the pump fake. Wants to run for it. Gets it. And then some. Down at the 35-yard line. Bennett is steamed. That just kills when you give up a scramble for 15 yards on a third and ten. Well, that, that just makes you think. You see Art Briles sitting there with us yesterday, and he says, I don't know, it's just that when Case is out there, things happen. Well, that's just what he meant. <laughs> things just happen like 15-yard runs for first down. Quickly out to Allridge. And again, he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. This time he gets forward for positive yards, a pickup of two. Allridge, the ball Justin here, Smart with the tackle. Yeah, that was the best two-yard run of the night. Two broken tackles. Again, good patience. A missed tackle by Bonilla, which is a rare thing. He's made a lot of plays tonight. We got him down unofficially for seven tackles. Houston, they have just one loss in conference play. That was against East Carolina. They give to Donnie Avery. And Avery. Picks up two yards. Another spectacular two-yard gain, but they're having trouble in the backfield right now. Both plays blown up early each of the last two. As a rule tonight, what's happened is SMU's done a nice job of contain, bottling up. Here's the thing. With the quarterback sprinting to his right, Keenum takes the lead snap. Wilton McCray and De Damone Hurst are right there playing contain for the reverse coming back at them they didn't run they didn't pursue they played responsibility keenum on third down passes high passes caught 
Harvey. Number one, Avery. There's a flag down on the field. That's just nice execution. I'm impressed with Carl Barnett. If they can't hike the ball with a normal center quarterback exchange, then how does he lead him so well when he starts on that sprint, and this time to the left, and a perfect throw to Jerron Harvey? Let's see what the call is. Line judge has taken off his hat. Illegal touching, offense. Number one, the player went out of bounds on his own and was first to touch a forward pass. The ball will be returned to the spot of the foul, correction, to the previous spot with loss of down, fourth down. That's the second time we've seen that this yep. evening. Yep. yep. Players are expected to accept the responsibility of knowing where the sideline is. You see, he was not forced out of bounds. He stepped out on his own, came back in, caught the ball. That's a violation. Same thing happened to SMU earlier in the end zone. So nothing has gone right here in the third quarter for the Houston Cougars, and they'll have to punt it away once again. Harvey's made some big plays so far this evening, but mental boo-boo there. Yeah, Houston, they cannot afford to stub their toe. They've got a big one next week against Tulsa and a battle that's basically going to be for the championship of the West Division. They can't afford to go into that with a loss. The ruling on the field was that the receiver went out of bounds on his own. Whether or not he was forced not reviewable. Houston will not be charged a timeout. Fourth down. Well, he was not forced, and uh, Art Briles, guys upstairs, should have told him that, and he wouldn't have had to uh, create such a fuss. If you're shoved out of bounds and come back in on your own as quickly as you can, you're allowed to catch the ball. Chase Turner kicks it away. Emmanuel Sanders on the return starts at his 20. And Sanders, using that big playability, gets out across the 40. SMU came out the second half with a vengeance, having heard their coach, who said this is going to be a demonstration of what we're made of. Two assignment errors in the secondary by Houston and two touchdowns by Zach Sledge, who runs the fly and catches the ball very well, unmolested by anybody in a red shirt. Both times, I believe it was cover two, and the safety simply took a poor angle coming off the hash. Willis wants a bunch. Incomplete. Looking for Emmanuel Sanders. The pass a little bit too hot. Well, if you're noticing something odd about Justin Willis in the night he's having, quarters one and three, he's 13 out of 16 for close to 300 yards in the second quarter. Not so much. Three for nine, 33 yards. It's been a roller coaster ride for the sophomore. Well, he got angry in the second quarter. He got very combative, and that's fine as long as you don't lose your cool. He got all up in the face of the Houston players, especially Rocky Schwartz, and he got his mind off his business a little bit. Pocket collapses, and Three Willis, away. with the scramble, gets out of bounds. It'll be third down and short coming up. He still carries the ball away from his body, and it will be knocked out repeatedly until he learns to stop doing that. And if you don't learn after three fumbles in the first half, when are you going to learn? Well, I don't know, but somebody, <laughs> the definition of a coach is a, a person that can take a problem on the practice field and make it disappear. Third down, SMU, they've scored touchdowns each of their two drives here in the third quarter. Willis keeps it, gets the first down. 16, Willis, the Not a big guy, but he has no problem lowering the head and getting what he needs. No, he's very, very combative. He's just tough. I mean, he's the kind of guy that 
if he didn't have so much talent and throwing ability, you'd probably play him as a linebacker or a fullback because he's tough. He's he's a leader. He's he's keeping his players, his teammates up all the time. I've seen a lot of guys with four turnovers just go in the tank. No, no, no way with Justin Willis. He has accounted for all four touchdowns for SMU. One on the ground and three through the air. Willis flushed. Gets it out of the back. Coming out. James Mapps. Making something out of nothing. Trent Allen ready to stop. If I'm coaching defense against Justin Willis, I'm going to tell my defenders, first guy in tackling, second guy and rip the ball out every single time. It'll be easy because he holds it right out there so you can see it. And that's just something that has to be corrected. It'll hurt them again tonight before it's over. Second down, seven. Willis can't get it out to Maps under pressure. It'll bring up a third down. Dave. Eric, this past March, SMU receiver Columbus Givens was in trouble, and we mean big trouble. He had a fever of 104 degrees. He had to be rushed to a hospital. He was treated for a viral infection. It was diagnosed as an infection of the blood that causes meningitis. He had to be quarantined. His teammates and coaches took medicine themselves as a precautionary measure to avoid an outbreak since he got immediate care and was in such good shape, able to recover a couple months later, running routes and practice. He told me before the game today, that was scary. Ugh. I can imagine Givens with a solid game so far had that 17 yard touchdown back in the first half. SMU happy to have him back. Third down, blitz is on. Willis just has to throw it away in the gentle vicinity of James Maps. And his friend Rocky Schwartz coming from his free safety position was clean. And you got to have an answer for a free safety blitz. You don't have a blocker for the free safety. So for the first time here in the third quarter, Phil Bennett's team has stopped and they'll have to punt the football away. Top punter at Conference USA, Thomas Morstead comes out, averaging 44 yards of boot. If he gets 44 yards this time, it'll be a touchback. And he will be credited for 44 yards and it is indeed a touchback, couldn't get the English. Couldn't get the ball to stop inside the five. Rocky Schwartz, free safety, walks up on the short side of the field. He's going to come outside here. My first drawing was very poor angle. He's going to come wider. There's no blocker for him. Actually, he came inside the guy that I drew. I thought the outside guy was Schwartz. That's an unusual path for a free safety. SMU had no answer for it. You've got to have a hot receiver. You've got to have a back that slips in behind that guy when he comes like that, and the quarterback has to see it and recognize it. Good defense by the Cougars. Caught Willis off guard. Case Keenum, backwards pass. Perry McDaniel, out across the 25. I mean, it feels like Houston has an inexhaustible supply of little guys that run like water bugs and one big guy, Jerron Harvey, who runs like a gazelle. I mean, really, they just got a lot of really gifted athletes. Second down play, Allridge gets out across the 30. That'll be enough for a first down. Houston doing something that's not really their normal style. They're just playing ball control. They're throwing little control flares and running the ball inside. They want to work some clock because that lead has diminished from 17 to 3. Quickly out to Allridge, trying to get ahead of steam, and he is. Knocked out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Well, the Houston Cougars, they came into this game second in Conference USA in total yardage per game. SMU, they were seventh in total yardage per game, but not tonight. SMU, they're going toe to toe with the Houston Cougars. They actually have eight more yards than Houston. Yeah, in seven less minutes. 
Keenum gets it out. Pass complete to the tight end. 87 Hafner with a reception. Mark Hafner with another grab. First another first down for the Cougars. Hafner is a good looking athlete. We talked earlier about the fact that his coaches feel like they can actually split him out and let him play wide receiver. Here he comes back on the field. Came into the game with 25 catches, two touchdowns. Haven't seen him out wide yet. Handoff Allrich. Allrich brought down. Nice tackle, Devin Lowry. But another good gain on first down, a pickup of nine. Coach, we haven't seen a lot of Blake Joseph. It's basically been all Case Keenum. Yeah, Joseph came in just briefly and then Keenan came back. I think they just wanted to sort of let him catch a blow a little bit. That was great blocking last time. Mark Hafner, 87, did a nice job of blocking at the point of attack. Ganaway gets the first down. I see there's a second and one. You would expect our Bryles to call that as a the, the old typical waist down. That's your waist down. You're going to throw it deep on second and one because you know you can come back and make the first down. Not not so. Not in this situation. He's running the clock. He's going to run out this quarter now. So that will indeed do it for three quarters of play. The Houston Cougars, they were shut out in the third quarter. It was a 14 nothing quarter for the SMU Mustangs to make this thing a game once again. SMU, they do not have a conference win so far this season, but Justin Willis trying to make a winner out of Phil Bennett, Zach Sledge, and the Mustangs within range down by three as we head to the fourth quarter. ESPN, your NBA destination for games Wednesdays and Fridays all season long. the all new 113 cubic inch Raider. The world's first chopper inspired custom that rides as great as it looks. The Raider from Star Motorcycles. We build it, you make it your own. Exclusively at your Yamaha dealer. Cool, crispy melt pizza. Yep, melted cheese between two crispy crusts. Wait, crispy and melty? That's two completely different things. I know, you got one thing then boom. Something totally different. Yeah, and then back again. Two things in one, like in perfect, perfect harmony. harmony. Uh-huh. Domino's new crispy melt pizza. Melted cheese and a topping between two crispy crusts. Get a medium for just $9.99. Call or order online. You know, your whole life they tell you to save, save, save. And we did. But when the time comes, nobody really tells you how to start spending. Actually, Fidelity can. They helped us figure it out. Of course, they have these new ways to do all that stuff. They helped with our income needs, so now we're free to tackle the Great Barrier Reef. What happened to Paris? Did we talk about Paris? A lot. We're going to Paris next. Retirement income now made easier. Call Fidelity or your own advisor. Smart move. I've driven a lot of different cars, but two things never change. No one demands more from their car than me, and nothing protects under the hood better than Peak. Peak Long Life Antifreeze is formulated with an advanced organic technology to protect any engine of any make, any model, any time. If you can drive it, Peak can protect it. And when I drive it, it better perform. Peak Long Life Antifreeze. When you peak, you win. It's invisible. You can't see it. You can't touch it. But every day it touches the whole world. Energy. And every day, even though you don't see our name or logo, the energy we create is right there. In innovative ways, helping two-thirds of the Fortune 100 and businesses across North America make your world 
work better. Constellation Energy, taking energy a step further. Through 45 minutes, the Houston Cougars on top of the SMU Mustangs, 31-28. SMU owned that third quarter, but now in the fourth, this is where the toughest team is going to win. This is time for Art Speak. Art Bryles, we're a no-nonsense, tough-minded, don't-ask-for-help program. We never use the word quit or loser. We love the fourth quarter. This is where he lives and his team. We shall see if they live or die. Pass is complete. Living the high life right there. Whenever you can get the ball to Anthony Allridge, another big gainer. Another Houston Cougar. And it's giving another first down for Houston. This is a two deep coverage, and the weakness of a two deep should be down the middle, and that's what's exploited right here. You got Allridge down the middle, Will Bonilla trying to run with him, and it's a mismatch. Allridge dropped at the line of scrimmage. All night, the big guys up front, Chris Parham, Ryan Leonard, Patrick Handy, with one or two exceptions, have been able to bottle up the elusive Allridge, who doesn't mind running inside at all. He's a little big man. Well, Art Bryles and his team, they have outscored opponents 73 to 27. Is that toughness or is that just conditioning? Both. I mean, you, you can't be tough if you're not in shape. Fatigue does make cowards of us all. You've heard that a few times from Vince Lombardi. Keenum keeps it. And how about that for a run? Very resourceful, gets down to the five-yard line. But the other thing about Keenum that doesn't come to mind as you watch him, he doesn't look graceful or pretty, but he's hard to tackle. Watch him when he decides to bolt out of here. Okay. Everybody's covered. He's got pressure. Let's see. I'd like to throw it now. I think I'll go ahead. Look here. Missed tackles. One, two. The third guy finally falls on him at the five-yard line. He's hard to tackle. Yeah, we're talking so much about Allridge and so much about Donnie Avery, but their offense is being triggered by a redshirt freshman. Case Keenum is doing a pretty darn good job. He almost ran that in the end zone. He got an even defense, meaning the tackles were lined up wide. And when he saw that, he did the old goose thing with the center. That's the deal between the quarterback and the center, where he can come up and just pop the center in a sensitive place, and the center hikes the ball, <laughs> and you run straight ahead. And he almost took that thing in the end zone. Every, every system has that as a part of the, the process between the quarterback and the center. Inside mm. handoff, that one had no chance at all. Oh, Terrence I don't, Ganaway. Ganaway. I don't like that call. And the reason I don't like it is because you're going to get penetration on the goal line. They're trying to run a quick trap with cross buck action. See, cross buck meaning coming across, and there's just big time penetration. Ryan Leonard is in the backfield. Charlie Berry's in the backfield. Boom, nice defense. Poor play call. One of the few bad calls I've seen tonight by Coach Bryles and his offensive staff. Twelfth play of this drive. Keenum keeps it. Fires. Touchdown, Donnie Avery. It took a while. But Houston finally on the board in the second half. There are so many options for Keenum on this play. He can hand it right there to the tailback. He can run the option, or he can just pull up and fire the ball to Donnie Avery, who's going to probably be open on the little curl route, curling inside his cover guy. To make it a 10-point lead once again, T.J. Lawrence. Barely sneaks it through. Well, yesterday, the battle for the Great Lakes State was played in East Lansing, Michigan. Chad Henney in Michigan on the road taking on Michigan State. Pick it up in the fourth quarter. Brian Hoyer finds Kellen Davis. Touchdown. Spartans up by three. More of the same. J.U. Kalkrick, his second touchdown of the game. 
21 unanswered points for the Spartans. But still time left on the clock and more than enough for Chad Henney. He finds Mario Manningham back of the end zone. The Wolverines take the lead and they take the game. 28-24 is the final score. Well, with that win, Michigan, they remain at number 12 in the BCS standings, and they've come a long way since losing their first two games to the Tadpoles State against Oregon. Yeah, I happened to be there to be the analyst for their Minnesota game, and Minnesota went up 10 to nothing on them. Had 13, to, it was 13 to 10 at the half, Michigan ahead, and they came out the second half and just flat put them away. They are playing with a vengeance. They're playing with a chip on their shoulder, and when, when Chad Henney and Mike Hart are full speed, they're as good as anybody right now, I believe. But I don't know if those two guys are full speed or if they will be throughout this year. Yeah, give us a sneak preview. Both Ohio State and Michigan still a game to play before they have to play each other in the battle for the Big Ten. Does Michigan have a good shot against Ohio State? Oh, I think they do. But I, I'm, I'm, as I said earlier, I think Ohio State is more physical and more dominant than I had expected. But I think Michigan can square up with them if they have, if they're at full strength. I don't think they can beat Ohio State without Chad Henney, and they need hard at least part of the game. Bill Bennett, Lane Duck head coach for SMU. He has his team playing so very hard on a Sunday evening here in Houston, Texas. With Bill Curry and Dave Ryan, I'm Eric Collins. So glad you could join us. As you'd expect in Conference USA football, we have had points, points, and a couple of more points for good measure. 38 points scored by the Houston Cougars, 10 more than the 28 scored by the SMU Mustangs. Movement on the line, free play for SMU. Justin Willis takes advantage. Are they going to call it a catch? Yes, they do. Pass complete to Zach Sledge. This SMU team, they have played very hard all evening long, even though just seven days ago they were just rocked when they found out their coach wasn't going to be. Perfectly fine. Result of the play is the first down. Seven days ago, they found out that their coach, Phil Bennett, would not be back next year. But, Coach, you've been in that situation before when you were in Kentucky. And well, what happens if you've got good guys on the team, and we did, they come out and they play hard like these guys have. And uh, that was one of the great moments in my career. We won three in a row because the players wanted to make a statement about our team. Willis keeps it. And Willis. Eight yard gain, Rocky Schwartz brings him down. This has been a game of big plays. Both teams have used the big play effectively. This is a, tonight's startling stat of the night. Houston, 24 plays of 10 yards <laughs> wow. or more. SMU with 15. Good gracious. That is startling. That, that is startling. You just don't expect to ever see that. Justin Willis still not taking care of the football when he bolts out of there and runs. Willis brought down another sack. Second sack of the night, Phillip Hunt. Phillip Hunt has been a force all year long for this Cougar defense. And he and other guys up front give credit to their strength coach and their D-line coach. Coach Jackson, the strength coach, has worked on him, and every single one of these guys has dropped weight, gotten stronger. Now we got Hunt with three pressures, one forced fumble, two sacks, five tackles, and two tackles for loss. Wow, a lot of stats in one game for a defensive lineman. So they go from having a second and two to a third and 11. Willis flushed by Hunts, breaks the tackle, and can't delay the inevitable. He's brought down Ernest Miller with the sack. That's Brendan Fahulu with the sack. Brendan Fahulu, a guy that has grown up and risen to the occasion this year in his senior year. Matching up with Philip Hunt, just too much for the offensive tackles of SMU. So a second and two turns into a fourth and 20, and SMU will punt it away. Oh, Morstead's kick drives Perry McDaniel all the way to the 15, and McDaniel down right where he caught the football. 
Almost lost it. Punt of 60 yards, no return. Time out, when we come back, Case Keenum and Houston will try and milk this 10-point lead. I think it's time I told my little bro my rules to live by. Rules. Chop. Always, always get chili on your nachos, Bel Grande. A Taco Bell classic, now topped with chili. New chili cheese nachos, Bel Grande, only at Taco Bell. That ought to do it. Assuming you've done enough for retirement doesn't make much sense either. That's why you should invest with Edward Jones to make sure you're on the right track. Because two out of three Americans are unprepared for retirement. Don't be one of them. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Mom, Dad, you gotta come see. It came without warning. Something in the mist! Shut the door! A mystery without answers. It's not supernatural. Nobody else heard that sound? What sound? From the legendary tale by Stephen King. Tie this around your waist and let us know you got at least 300 feet. Discover the secret. Who knows how far this mist has spread? Could be the whole world. Of what lies behind. Daddy, there are things out there. I'm gonna take you home. Oh my god. The Mist, directed by Frank Darabont, rated R. Yesterday's history, just a nice memory. I never think about yesterday. The only day that matters is today. Start today with Gillette Fusion Power and the confidence you get from the world's closest, most comfortable shave. Turn it on. Soothing micro pulses help you reduce friction. You'll barely feel the blades. Gillette Fusion Power. Be your best today. Hey guys, they were out of Snickers. No! But I got these Snickers Dark Bars instead. Yeah! ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Taco Bell, Think Outside the Bud, and RBS, the Royal Bank of Scotland Group. Make it happen. It is unseasonably warm, even for Houston. Today, 77 degrees at kickoff. Now, there's no such thing as unseasonably warm for Houston. <laughs> November, 77 it's, degrees is, is... Houston, that's cold. That's cold, man. This place is a warm, humid Ready. place. Ten-point lead for the Cougars. Trying to bleed some clock. Anthony Ulrich, good run. Let's go down on the field and Dave Ryan. All right, Eric, thanks a lot. It has been impressive to watch Houston Redshirt freshman quarterback Case Keenum operate on the sideline. Excellent maturity and poise for a first-year player. It really goes back to his background. Wiley High School in Abilene, Texas. He was a three-year starter, won a state championship. His dad, Steve, was a college coach. Several different stops here in the state of Texas. He was a ball boy from the time he could stand up on the sidelines and throw the ball. Also last year, back up to Kevin Cobb says he learned a lot about how Art Riles calls plays and how a mature leader as a quarterback should handle himself. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, Art Riles is actually very happy. Well, I shouldn't say happy, but as Ulrich is brought down behind the line of scrimmage, he loved having Kevin Cobb. Knew him so well, and it was just a luxury to have Cobb play for him for 50 consecutive games. But Art Riles said he actually had a little bit of a... He was looking forward to this season and playing without a Kevin Cobb and seeing what it was like to work with a different signal caller. Well, just consider he had him four years before he got here, too. He had him eight years in a row. You know, as much as you love your quarterback, I'm not sure you'd want to coach anybody eight years in a row, high school and college, and not have anybody else to break in, although, it was, as you say, it was a luxury, and, and Kevin, of course, did himself proud. Oh, that play was almost blown up. Keenum gets it out to Avery, and he is dropped at the line of scrimmage. That play just had trouble from the get-go. There is no quit in SMU, none. And they're up against a very determined Houston Cougar. This Houston Cougar group realized they were in trouble, and they went right back to work here in the fourth quarter. But they got their hands full, that's for sure. So the punt team will have to come on. Chase Turner will give it away to SMU. Columbus Givens is back deep, and he is pushed inside the 25. Givens. A little start and stop. 
And sneaks out to the 34-yard line. Good running from a school that is known for fantastic runners. Don't Walker. Uh, he was the first great running back back in the 40s for SMU. Dope Walker so fantastic, they named the Dope Walker Award after him. And how about this? Half of the Pony Express, Craig James, a running back at SMU the exact same time as that man. How about an abundance of riches? Eric Dickerson and Craig James in the same backfield for four straight years at SMU. Yeah, that's not fair. That's scary. Craig James still in the record book. He holds the record for the best punting average. His senior season averaged 44 yards a punt. So not only a great runner, but also using his legs for, for other things as well. Probably didn't have to punt very frequently with that offense that they had. No, I don't think they punted but three times while he was here. That's why he had such a good effort. He's a great guy, too. We enjoy working with him here at ESPN. Understands football, understands people. Fun to work with. Good run. Justin Willis picks up a first down. Still plenty of time for the Mustangs. Pass over the middle is complete. Nominal game for Columbus Gibbons. He's brought back, thrown to the ground by Trent Allen. It's clear that the defensive strategy of Allen Waddell, the uh, defensive coordinator for Houston, is that they're going to get after. They're going to get after Justin Willis. Waddell played his college football in Austin for the Texas Longhorns. Ball is loose. That was almost disastrous. Willis just has to jump on top of it. Coming up immediately following our game right here on ESPN Sports Center coming your way if you, you just can't wait. Sports Center is currently housed on ESPN News. That last play was a mistake on the snap count by Mitch Enright, the center. He simply snapped the ball in the wrong count and went on the ground. So that's why we have a third and 13 situation. Willis with plenty of time. Friars a fastball that's knocked away. Givens had the ball knocked out of his hands by Rocky Schwartz. When you rush with three, that's the bad news. The good news is that you're dropping eight, and there's almost no place to throw the football. So while Willis had somebody open, he was quickly covered, and the ball was knocked away. The ever-present Rocky Schwartz in the middle of the field. He loves to play. The punt. Thomas Morstead, his last punt was 60 yards. This one not so good. It goes out of bounds, and it'll be Houston football at the 34-yard line. Oof. All right. Underneath six minutes to play. Houston with a 10-point lead. Try to milk some clock. Douglas, from the conference. James, Anderson. Oh, yeah, yesterday, yeah. That's a lot of green. What kind of bird is that? Okay, guys, I've done a course. What? Positive thinking. Positive thought makes a positive impact. Okay? Positive thought has a positive impact. Look at me. That's right, okay. Come on. Talk is no substitute for action. That's the power. Make it happen. The Royal Bank of Scotland Group. I am good. Yes, you are. This week on E60, Michael Smith with Kellen Winslow Jr. Plus the sports guy is back. E60, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. Everywhere the surfer goes, eight days later, the planet dies. All that you know 
is at an end. How do you fight something that can eat planets? It's here. Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Well, the toughness of the Houston Cougars has been tested here in the fourth quarter, and so far they are answering the test pretty darn well. They have a 10-point lead, and they have an opportunity to salt away this game with a time-consuming drive. Case Keenum back in as the signal caller. He has been in for all but three plays offensively for Houston. Blake Joseph didn't get much action so far this evening. First down run, Terrence Ganaway gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well, tomorrow, Monday Night Football comes your way. The coach may be new, but the faces are familiar. Led by Big Ben, the Steelers are back in a familiar spot. Division leaders. It's been a troubled start for Baltimore. Can Ray and the Ravens turn things around? Steelers, Ravens for the division lead at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Ten-point lead. I'll tell you one thing that's happened to Houston. Their blocking schemes in the run game have been thoroughly confused by SMU with all kind of stunts. They haven't run inside very well. Even there where it looks like they popped it. There's a free tackler. They got an extra guy in the box and that's forced Houston to throw the ball a little more than probably Art Riles would have liked. They really have not run up the kind of yardage that we would have expected. Avery with 159 yards all purpose. Aldridge with 163. That's a far cry from the 500 we advertised when we talked about their performance against Rice with the 200 300 combination between the two. Wow. Total offense numbers pretty much par for the course. They are one yard shy of what they normally average through the first eight games of the season. Timeout called SMU. Want to stop the clock? Four and a half remaining. So the Houston Cougars next week, that's, well, their big game. They take on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in a game up in Tulsa with the West Division of Conference USA on the line. Both teams control their destiny. If either team wins out, they will win the West Division and take on the East for a chance to, to win Conference USA here in 2007. This is what Houston has coming up. Tulsa next weekend, and then they finish off against the Marshall team with just one win on the season. That's conference play. They finish up out of conference against Texas Southern. Well, Coach, you, you, you said that the fourth quarter, Art Browse would want to see toughness out of his team. Yeah, I like I liked looking into the face of Anthony Aldridge. I could almost hear him saying, just get the ball in my hands. These are the kinds of guys that want the ball in the fourth quarter. Keenum keeps it himself, and Houston will keep the football. Slight little play fake. Thought about throwing it out in the option. Instead, keeps it, and the clock will continue to roll once they reset the chains. Okay, Keenan going to turn and look at the defensive end to his left. Over here, he's looking at a defensive end. That end widens. Had he come down inside, then Keenan would have handed the ball. When he saw the big gap, he just took it and made the first down. Red shirt freshman quarterback, Case Keenum, played a solid all-around game so far this evening. Ganaway fights for a couple. Damone Hurst, Will Bonilla have been all over the field tonight, literally and figuratively. Hurst with six tackles, Bonilla with 10 unofficially, what we got up here. And I really think that the 
attempt to run that cross buck trap which they've tried five or six times. I know if they pop it it's going to go a long way but there's too much penetration along the front. The entire offense looks to the sideline once again. And meanwhile the clock ticks down 320. And they just get the play off. Allridge between the tackles is brought down. Good stop by Ryan Leonard. But over a third down. Yeah. Leonard and Yinga and Parham and Muse, those guys have played well up front tonight. Coming up next, Sports Center coming your way here on ESPN. Immediately following our game, Sports Center will get you caught up on that big game between the Colts and the Patriots. And how about the huge day for the rookie from Palestine, Texas? Adrian Peterson, just a, a doozy of an afternoon for the Minnesota Vikings. And of course, the whole shakedown in the BCS, Ohio State still number one, but a brand new number two. Third down and six. Keenum out to Allridge. Another first down, Allridge, and this 22. will take more time off the clock. A late flag does fly. And Allridge wisely getting on the ground, staying in bounds. He could have burst and tried to go for extra yards. He knew he, knew he would get knocked out of bounds if he did that, so he just got on the ground. I didn't see what the flag would be about. And SMU's only hope is that this is against Houston. Yep, Charlie Berry, 92, maybe a little uh, late hit. Personal foul, defense, number 92. 15-yard penalty for the end of run. Take a look at the bottom of the screen. Sebastian Vollmer locked up with Charlie Berry. Charlie Berry got a hold of the face mask. Oh. And a little nice doggy throw there. You can't do that. You don't get away with that. And you don't give up the extra yards at this stage in the game, Charlie. That's for sure. Yeah, well, now it's basically Katie bar the door unless Houston makes a problem. If I was going to do that to somebody, I wouldn't pick a 6'8", 290 guy to do it. <laughs> Sebastian Vollmer is a big, strong guy. Houston just trying to avoid that turnover. Safe handoff to Ganaway. Picks up a, a yard. Tyler Jones on the stop. It still seems strange to me to see people spread all over the field and in the gun when they're running the clock out. But as, this is their normal offense, and they, they're confident. They handle the ball well. They do these things. They keep the clock moving. It's just really remarkable, and Art Browse has been doing it a long, long time. You just get a feeling this guy's got a handle. He's got to an answer for everything that he needs to answer. Hand off. Andre Kahn with his first carry of the day. Well, Phil Bennett facing off against Art Bryles. Art Bryles' program is, is really soaring right now while Phil Bennett is watching his time. The Hilltop in Dallas come to a close. He is the lame duck coach. He was told last week that he won't be brought back next year. And well, it's all said and done. His, his team, how'd you feel they played? Tonight? I think they played lights out. They played their hearts out, and without the turnovers, I think they would have had a, a really good chance to win this game. But it was a very competitive, very physical game by both teams. A good performance by SMU. Keenum keeps it himself. And Keenum stays in bounds, and that'll do it. Another first down for Houston. Two and reasons that was important. It showed some class, not trying to score another touchdown against an opponent that you got down and out. It also showed that Houston's smart enough not to try to get greedy and have a chance to actually let SMU score and get back in the game. All it'll take is one more snap and a kneel down. And win number six on the year for Houston will be in the books. Houston Cougars improved to six and three, five and one in Conference USA. They are one game ahead of Tulsa in the West Division of Conference USA. They will battle for all the marbles for the most part in Tulsa next weekend. That'll be the big game 
in the West Division this year in Conference USA. Phil Bennett and SMU, they fall for the seventh straight time. They now move to 1-8 on the year overall, 0-5 in conference play. It's a final. Houston, they win by 10. 38-28 is your final score. Coming up next, Sports Center. John Butchergrass and Scott Van Pelt coming your way. For Bill Curry and Dave Ryan, I'm Eric Collins saying so long from Houston, Texas. Now let's send you to Sports Center. That's the car you'll want us like. See stores or visit WWE. is Sports Center. The NFL's matchup of the season all comes down to the final frame. Tom Brady once again saves his best for last. The battle of the league's best running backs all about the Rook. Adrian Peterson setting an all-time single game rushing record and featuring the longest play in NFL history Sunday a record day for making big plays all across the land. Plus we have a new leader atop the chase for the next Dell Cup. You'll see for yourself on Sports Center right now. What's good? Welcome to Sports Center with John Butchergrass. I am Scott Van Pelt. Perfection was on the line in Indianapolis. For one team, the other stays perfect. Colts and Pats both undefeated. First time ever that two teams, 7 0 or better, face off. And to get us going, Chris Berman, segment one, The Blitz. Yay. <laughs> Welcome to the Blitz, everybody. Chris Berman along with Tom Jackson. Hello, every football fan. You, everybody, Tom, you were looking at this game for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. Fun. Two teams that hadn't lost. Combined record of 15-0. We've never had undefeateds play this late in the, se in the season. Baseball has its fall classic. Mm -hmm. Football has its fall classic. First weekend in November, Patriots versus Colts. Here we go with Super Bowl 41 and a half from Indianapolis and it had that feel had that feel as soon as these teams started racking up the wins and the points but no Marvin Harrison for Peyton Manning and you saw Tom Brady with game face on but bang right away in his face was Robert Mathis first offensive series Patriots trouble well great spin move on the outside by Mathis and gets to Brady something we haven't seen a lot of this year first time they haven't scored on their first drive of the season the Colts missed a field goal on their first drive now later in the first Joseph live and let a die man as he blossomed late last year and certainly this year in his sophomore season sets up a field goal Colts lead at three nothing Brady to Randy Moss for a touchdown and Bob Sanders was caught betwixt and between. We know where to go. Well, you, you've got uh, Welker in the slot, so Sanders is going to give help to the slot. You get a good bump on the outside, but Randy Moss, too strong, too athletic, jumps up, makes an outstanding catch. So the score is 7-6 just after the two-minute warning. Brady going for deep, but Antoine Bethea is right there at the one to pick it off. 175 straight passes without a pick, but the Colts now try to turn something by defense into something in offense. And Joseph Adai does just at that. Down the sidelines, what? Makes the move right there and he's gone. 73 yards on a little dump pass and all of a sudden the place is rocking 13-7. Well, great job of getting through the hole. Little check down and, you know, just good blocking and nice job of not running out of bounds. Dallas Clark with a block there. 187 yards, total yards, first half a die. Now Brady to Moss over the middle. One-handed catch. Mm. The Patriots starting from their own nine. Look at that. 17-yard pickup. Later on here in the third quarter, late in the third, third and one, Bob Sanders, that's what he does. Well, he comes through. Once you put him up near the line of scrimmage, you know, he's slight in terms of his size, but boy, he can make some tackles and hits. Holds him to field goal, 13 to 10, it's the Colts. Manning going to Reggie Wayne, and this would be a huge play, Tommy. Looked like he should have had it. Well, you know, Reggie's going to make that catch nine out of ten times. That's a game changer. And so the Colts punt as a result. Now, same score, 13-10. Brady. And whoop, 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 whoop. what an athletic play by Gary Brackett, and he's not yet down. 
He's up, he's got a little convoy. Brackett trying to get across the midfield strike. He does so. Colts, defense, second pick of Brady. What a play by the linebacker. Well, he got a great drop. You get to about 17 yards to help your defensive backfield, pulls it in, and had the presence of mind to get up and make it into a better play. Indy backed up the third and 15, but Manning buys time. Dallas Clark is there in front of two defenders. First down, Indianapolis. Now third and three at the 13. It's a dive from the single back. Bang up the middle. First down sets up a first and goal. Colts to second and goal at the one where Manning calls his own number. Touchdown in under 10 minutes to go. Colts 20, Patriots 10. New England now trying to come back. Brady looking long, and you'll never guess who he's looking for here. Randy Moss cruising, makes the catch at the three. 55 yards, sets up first and goal. Now it's third and goal. Brady, zing to Wes Welker. That's beautiful. Three-yard touchdown. It's 20 to 17. Now Manning under pressure. Roosevelt Colvin linebacker Ty Warren up front. Fumble. The Colts recover, but Manning was drilled. Yeah, you see Manning get hit right there. The ball is out. It's an obvious fumble. Uh, Patriots at the time don't know where the ball is. Recovered by the Colts. But it would force a punt. So now New England, three and a half to go. Brady, Dante Stallworth was quiet till now. 33-yard gain down to the 13. Next play, Brady to one of the old reliables, Kevin Falk. Zips between three defenders. Touchdown. And with just over three to go, the Patriots lead it 24 to 20. Colts not done. Manning. Reggie Wayne has this one. Knocked out of bounds after a 24-yard gain. Now, two and a half to go. Number 97 is Jarvis Green. Strips Manning of the football. It's a fumble. And Rosie Colvin has it. Tackled. So Colvin gets a penalty for spiking on the Colt helmet in the middle of the field for delay a game, but the defense did the job late New England. Yeah, Jarvis Green with an outstanding pass rush. Colvin, good presence to get the football. Huge turnover. We said it was going to be an issue. Now, just over the two-minute warning, Tom Brady complete on third and six to Wes Welker. The Colts have burned timeouts. The Patriots are able to kneel it down. Headbutting is Brady. Dejected Peyton Manning, dejected Colts, and the Patriots and Bill Belichick have won in Indy, coming from 10 down with 10 to go, winning 24 to 20. It was not the offensive fireworks show that you might have expected. Neither quarterback, for example, was even close to 300 yards. There were a couple of turnovers for each team, but in the end, in the championship game, it was the Colts coming from way back in this game, Super Bowl 41 and a half, if you will, it was the Patriots coming from behind to win it. Really, it's a football game against the Colts. That's all it was. The other games don't mean anything. The ones ahead of them don't mean anything. It's one game. It was a good competitive football game. Our guys made a few more plays, and that's why we won. That's that's what the significance of this game is to me. It felt good. I mean, to you know, you, you celebrate with your coach in the locker room. You give him a hug on the sideline, and uh, you know, some victories do feel better than others. Yes, and this one is one of those that that you'll remember that it was a big one, and it's very nice to have. You know, the thing is, is, is we're nine and zero, oh and and. It really doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And none of this matters. And what matters is January. That's when it matters. Well, what matters is the Patriots are now 9 0 heading into their bye. And in the fourth quarter, Tom Brady, a different result. By the way, three more touchdown passes gives him 33 through nine games. And uh, so the New England Patriots, which big news, scoring only 24 points. They go on to beat the Indianapolis Colts. First of all, much more of a defensive game than a lot of people thought, which mm -hmm. I wondered on our morning show whether the defenses, one or both, Absolutely. would stand up. And I think they both did. But give the Patriots credit because they were the ones with the comeback. Well, they came up with the plays at the end of the game and in the fourth quarter to win the football game. And, and although I thought a lot of things were balanced as you watch this game play out, I thought that in the end, along with turnovers from Indianapolis, uh, certainly Randy Moss made a difference. And, you know, knowing that a guy is going to go deep and you need to get the ball deep and to be able to do it and execute that, you know, when I know that the defense is really set to stop that, uh, an extra extraordinary statement in terms of New England, Brady, 
and this uh, Randy Moss and what they're able to do. Well, and, and for any uh, for the New England Patriots, the red zone defense was extremely important. One was a missed field goal early by Vinatieri, but the Colts had several opportunities mm -hmm. to score in red zone and got only field goals. That interception bracket got them nothing later in the game. Uh, the Patriots had some routes turned against Moss early, but certainly turned that around. And I, the Patriots did a, a better job on a guy who had a great game, and that was Joseph Adai. So give and, 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 and I think that, you know, when you look at this football game, I think a lot more competitive than, than a lot of people thought. Well, I, 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 you know, I, I know. I, I knew it was going to be a competitive football game. Um, I'm already looking forward in my yeah, way to round two. Well, a long way down the road, but I'm already looking forward look, to round two. everybody involved, Tom, in the game, both sides, they knew it would be competitive. Absolutely. Uh, the Colts uh, certainly would have liked to win it, but it, after 12 straight wins, they finally lost the game. They played with championship effort and championship uh, big plays down the stretch, and, and they made them and we did not, so that was disappointing. Usually... Uh, you want to feel like you can close people out in the fourth quarter, and we couldn't do it. We didn't have an answer for uh, Randy Moss today. Our injuries are a part of it, and um, it, it's not a uh, it's not an excuse. Uh, you still gotta whoever's in there, um, you still gotta make it happen with whoever's in there. We need to get healthy. We need, uh, uh, I need to get some guys back out there on the field uh, for sure, and um, and go back to work. Well, the history of this series in 03, close game, one regular season uh, in week 13 by the Patriots, and they won the AFC Championship game and moved on to the Super Bowl in 04. A close game one in the regular season. Then in the championship game, they won in the divisional playoffs. They won 20 to three, went on to win the Super Bowl. 06, regular season win by the Colts. Got them home field advantage. They won that game at home and went on to win the Super Bowl. So in this series, home field will probably now be owned if these two teams met mm -hmm. by the Patriots because the Colts would have to have one better record. And mm -hmm. by the way, their schedule uh, is, is tougher than New England's mm -hmm. down. So New England would have to lose a couple of games. But we know the Colts are a ment much more mentally tough team to go into, quote, elements in New England, I think, Tom, than they were in 03 and 04. Do you uh, agree? I, I also think we've seen a bit of role reversal in terms of the way these two teams play. I think that the Colts are now the team that really wants to establish the run game. I think that in, in inclement weather, I think they would do much better. And I, and I just think that they're a much better defense uh, than they yep. were last year. So, Again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to round two. Yeah. There are no moral victories in, in when you play in the NFL, but without the starters that they didn't have in this game, I, I think that you have to walk away as a, as a Colt fan or as the Indianapolis Colts saying, boy, if we've got all hands on deck, we might get a different result. I think they would take their chances holding a team that had averaged, what, 41 points a game to, to 24 points and figuring that they, right. could, they, they could score 30. They certainly have a running back in a die. And the Indianapolis Colts certainly at times with Mathis figured out a way to pass rush at yes, least some of the yes, time. Yes. So, you know what? If this was Super Bowl 41 and a half and they might meet again in the playoffs, bring it on. But to the victor go the spoils. The New England Patriots from behind win it 24-20. Which is starting to blitz. The Blitz. Brought to you by Nike Football. Leave nothing. Great job, you know, with the Highlights on the way know, from the Dallas victory over Philadelphia. You know, Terrell Owens had a huge game you know, talking about tonight. it now. You know, um, I think about four or five guys, you know, had touchdowns. So, you know, he's doing a great job. I mean, I, I just want to come here and just, you know, show these guys, you know, this is what I do. You know, when I was here, I made plays and, you know, there's nothing going to change. You know, um, with everything that happened last year, you know, um, you know, I, I talked to the guys during the course of the week. You know, sure, there, I mean, there were some things that I might have, you know, done differently. But, you know, I feel at peace with myself with, with the way the situ situation, hand, you know, uh, panned out. And, you know, uh, I'm with the Cowboys and, you know, I'm doing what I was supposed to do. And so, you know, we're just trying to, you know, get on track and, you know, win some division games. And, you know, tonight was a, a good step for us. Yeah, I mean, just... just Normal jargon, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> you know, it's going to be a lot of, you know, uh, trash talking out there. And, uh, you know, you know, coming into this environment is hostile. And, you know, they're trying to get a win. And we coming in here and we got a win on the road. So it was a little feisty out there. Was it a little less hostile, though? When you did your dance, it doesn't seem like you got, you got the food as you might have expected in that Well, you're right. Um, as I said earlier in the week, there was a lot of love in those booze, <laughs> you know. So as you saw, I didn't get that many booze. I mean, it was huge for us, and um, we know the type of team that they have, and you know, there's a lot of talent on that offensive side of the ball. So, I mean, I know, and this team knew that they can they can strike at any any given point. And so, so, you know, with Donovan and Westbrook and those guys, and you know, Kevin Curtis coming in here and stepping up. So, you know, we just had to come in and just take care of business and worry about you know what we do and what we do best. Sarah, when Tony played, you guys played the Eagles on Christmas Day last year. They kind of had their way with Tony. What's been the biggest difference you've seen between that day and, and now? Why do you guys have such a night? Just the guys up front, you know, uh, obviously with the addition of Leonard Davis, you know, obviously getting, getting him some protection and, you know, you know, with the year on his belt going through training camp and um, obviously getting a, getting a feel for everyone, everybody working together, then he's going to feel more comfortable back there, you know, um, you know, whether it's three, five, seven step drop and, you know, he's delivering the ball. Can you talk about your touchdown? <clears throat> you know, as soon as it was a Dawkins that was on it, as soon as it came, that Tony, you guys had it? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, 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 these are situations that uh, we knew they were going to bring pressure, you know, at any given time. We just have to uh, be on point. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's all about execution and, um, you know, just reading hots. And, and that's what basically what happened. I don't know why they did it, but it didn't work. The, uh, the Eagles dancing in the zone, was that planned or just kind of came to you? No, uh, just kind of just spontaneous. Were you surprised that they didn't create? I was. I was. I, I mean, I told y'all, man, these fans love me here. <laughs> Both. Did it mean anything to be a captain? You go out there before the game this week? Well, I mean, we have our, our captains that the, the team, um, you know, chose during the course of the year, you know, at the beginning of the year. I wasn't fortunate to be one of those, so I was a self-appointed captain, you know, in one of our meetings. <laughs> So, you know, the guys will tell you I self-appointed myself at the beginning of the season, even though I didn't make it. But, you know, um, you know, there there are going to be ways where, you know, these guys look look for me for some guidance, and, and um, you know, some sometimes you know they look for me to kind of you know create a spark here and there. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, coach uh, appointed me to captain this week, and you know, we just went with it. It wasn't a coincidence. <clears throat> no, I was going to be motivated regardless. So, I mean, it, it was just, uh, I mean, it, it meant a lot. And, you know, I, I came here with the, with the focus, you know, to come in here and win and, 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 and try to, you know, win a division game. You know, I think that that's really the most important thing is for us to kind of execute and establish ourselves and try to, you know, separate ourselves so we can, you know, create some home field advantage for ourselves, you know, and, and, and you know, late in the season during the playoffs. Speaking of a division game, you have one next week for first place. Giants. Yeah, I mean, they're going to create a challenge for us, and obviously they've gotten better, you know, since week one, and so have we. And I think uh, right now we're, we're starting to really, you know, uh, define ourselves and, and, and really try to, you know, work offensively, defensively, and special team-wise as a whole unit. And so we can, kind of, you know, like you said, solidify ourselves and, and kind of separate ourselves so we can, you know, create, uh, create some, uh, some home field advantage toward the end of the season. It would appear that their window for the Super Bowl is kind of closed. You know, with this game, you could say that you could take satisfaction in having a hand in it. Well, yeah, I mean, just coming in here, man, we knew that Philly at, you know, any given time, you know, with the offense that they have, they can put points on the board. And I think uh, defensively, you know, it was a challenge for us, and I think we rose to the occasion. And, you know, we feed off each other, you know, and we, we look for, you know, the defense kind of create, you know, some feel position for us and you know when we go out on ex uh, on offense you know we try to put some points on the board and you know this is just a, a taste of what this team can do um, so we're, we're just going to try to build on what we have and and the mistakes and that we made tonight and we're going to try to you know come in on Monday and Tuesday and correct those. Tia what are your thoughts about Coach Andy Reid and the struggles he's going through? <clears throat> well I mean it's tragic you know and um, you know, for him to go through something like this at this time of the season, um, 
you know, I, I can't do anything but wish him well. And I know it's uh, it, it's weighing weighing very very hard on him. And you know, and you know, I wish him well. And I know that's not a situation that he would ideally want to be in at this time of the season. But you know, things happen, and you know, you just got you just got to move on from it. And I know Andy Reid, you know, he's not gonna you know quit. You know, by any means, just just because of this thing uh, going on. So, uh, you know, the the team is going to rally around around Andy, and uh, he's going to keep fighting, and those guys are going to keep fighting for him as well. Terrell, does Donovan seem like the same quarterback? That's one for Terrell, guys. Same quarterback to you that he was like when you were here. Well, I mean, it, it, he's coming off uh, a knee injury, you know what I mean? So it's going to be kind of tough to kind of get back to that form of where he was before the knee injury. So, um, and at the same time, you know, they have to work with what they have on offense. And, uh, you know, they're just trying to do the best that they can. And, you know, for whatever reason, you know, he, they'll get better. Thanks, guys. All right. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Terrell Owens, self-appointed captain. Last year, of course, it was just an absolute circus when he went back to Philadelphia, and the numbers uh, reflected that maybe there was a little stress, a little pressure, but uh, in this Sunday night game, he put on a show. Ten grabs, buck 74, a touchdown, and eight different grabs moved the change. We'll show you the highlights of this one. Terrell asked about the difficulty for Andy Reid, obviously the distractions uh, during the week in, in court. Judge really harshly criticizing him as his sons have found trouble again and again. His team found trouble on the field here. First play from scrimmage, Donovan McNabb hit by Marcus Spears and Brady James pounces on the football. The Eagles trying to, or the Cowboys I should say, trying to make this really hurt and it does. There's one of those first down catches, Romo, who got his money in the contract extension to Owens, the captain, and he makes a big run down to the 10. Later in the drive, third and goal, and if the Eagles can hold him to three, maybe it doesn't hurt so much. Instead, it's a Julius Jones touchdown and the Cowboys off and running. Eagles, to their credit, answered right back, but then Romo, one of the beautiful passes he threw, and there were a boatload of them, to Tony Curtis, touchdown, Cowboys up 14-7. Here, third and 10, late under the two-minute warning in the first half. That's just an ill-advised throw from McNabb into double coverage. Ken Hamlin picks it off, and now the Cowboys have a chance to really put some hurt on the Eagles before halftime, and then it's Marion Barber who runs with ferocity, takes it in. It's 21-7 right before the break. McNabb hating it, and Owens doing his uh, eagle taunt, and there'll be more of that to come. Third quarter, Owens gives you the little woo, -woo, -woo and he's gone. 45-yard <laughs> touchdown. You know his eyes have got to light up when you see what happens. Brian Dawkins will come on the blitz, and Owens is left unguarded, which is ill-advised. Right here, you'll see the blitz, and then you'll see Owens with the woo -woo 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 outlet. 10 catches, buck 74, Cowboys up 28-7, and he's got his own little Terrell towel. And then Romo to Jason Witten, who's been a very popular target for him, and he gets just blasted, loses his hat, and keeps on chugging. Arian Motley, please. Finally brought down inside the 10. Another couple of looks at this one, as you see. He gets blasted, helmet off. He just, as a hockey guy, you have to say, you can you say he's a hockey player? I, I, t I tend not to do that, but you, they, they would like that. Blood out of the yeah, he's bleeding out of the nostrilla. It's all right. Sticks and wit. Stuff up there. And the Cowboys just fine, thank you very much. They enter a stretch where they play Philadelphia, New York, and Washington. Uh, we can check Philadelphia off as a win. It's the first 7-1 start for the Cowboys since 1995. They've got their sights set now on the Giants and the Redskins, both of whom are above 500. Romo's number after getting the big numbers off the field, 20 for 25, 324, the three touchdowns. He continues to hang big numbers for the Eagles after a difficult week. A loss just adds to the problems for Andy Reid. We get the thing changed around and get a little momentum going, and then we'll be fine. But <clears throat> we gotta we gotta back to back some games here to get some momentum going here. What I'm trying to do is, no matter what the score is, just es execute the play. You know, whatever it says that they're gonna give you, take that. And um, I thought our offense did a pretty good job of that this this evening. <laughs> Final score said it was a 21-point loss, one of the worst in the Reed-McNabb era. If you throw out Eagle games where McNabb was injured or the team sat their starters prior to the playoffs, it's the worst home divisional loss with number five, McNabb, the man who's meant so much to that team, playing a full game. An amazing day of NFL football. More coming up. Running back showdown, but it's all about Adrian Peterson, NFL single-game rushing record. Don't miss it. Also, Brett Favre. 
and the Packers, Larry Johnson and the Chiefs. No one thought the Packers would go into KC and win that game. And after Sunday's race down in Texas, the chase for the next L Cup has a new points leader. Details coming up. How did we get booked into this? Don't worry. I got enough for both of us. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. First time at the upper points? Wow, this Subaru Tribeca has a great interior. Award-winning, actually. Backup camera. It handles better than our car. But then again, it does have all-wheel drive standard, 256 horsepower engine, top safety pick award, DVD player, third row seats, and four cargo area tie-down hooks. I love it when you tow a car. The all-new Tribeca, starting at just $29,995. Lease the 08 Tribeca for just $2.99 per month at the Subaru year-end event. Sports Center, brought to you by Budweiser. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Welcome back to the Blitz, everybody. Well, you get set to watch a football game and you say... Boy, I wonder if we're going to see some records set today. Now, notice I didn't say record. I said records. Really? Chargers and Vikings? What records could we say set at the Homer Dome? Ah, that's why we feature this on the Blitz. LaDainian Tomlinson, lightning bolts rolling. They've won three in a row. Here's a touchdown. And they're going to roll the Vikings heading right into that Colts game. He passes Jim Brown, 107 rushing all-time, trailing only Emmett Smith, Marcus Allen, Walter Payton. He's fourth all-time on the rushing touchdown list. Adrian Peterson in his eighth game. Where will he go? Well, we'll start with 17 yards here, Tom. Two plays that are ball to Adrian Peterson. Tie the record for the shortest touchdown run in NFL history. <laughs> it's one yard. We're tied at seven. Ryan Longwell, end of half. 7-7 seven, seven game. Ah, what the heck? It's inside. Let's kick a field goal. It is Lloyd. Oh, but Antonio counting Cromartie from nine yards deep. Makes one miss. That guy's not a catch. Not going to catch him, and he could go longer and all the way farther than anyone in the history of the NFL. 109 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, and take a look at how close Cromartie came to the back of the end zone. And then think about how many big people are on the football field, unable to take the right angle. We see this all the time now. Long field goal miss. Guy returns the football, ends up getting a touchdown. That's a defensive back who has three touchdowns in the last six quarters for San Diego Bradshaw. Just all boy. Well, what are we going to do about it? Adrian Peterson, that left side for Hutchinson and McKinney and Burt, and he's gone. The rookie, 64 yards. Marlon McCree, I don't think so. Yeah, and great blocking. You see the kick out block right there, a little feel inside. And boy, did this kid have that burst. Oh. Whatever it is that you need to get all the way to the end zone, he's got. We're tied at 14 late third quarter, and a first down and more picked up by Peterson. Look at the way he runs it. He runs so hard, too. Hits the whole 13 yards. Brooks Bollinger in for the injured Tavares Jackson to Sidney Rice. Oh, yeah. Rice, a 40 yard touchdown. It's 21 14, Minnesota. Chargers have kicked the field goal 21 17, and now own territory. Run right this time, then back, cuts back for 16 yards. No, you're not going to stop me either. Look at Peterson get the extra yards. Next play. Think he's going to get the ball again, Tom? <laughs> Bang, and pass the line, and to the secondary again, 19 yards. Now all the way down to the 31. Takes the handoff, and by trying to get extra yards, look at him dart, but Igor Olshansky cuts it to the And the Chargers get the ball but could not take advantage. So, now Minnesota back in business, which means Adrian Peterson. Blocks, right, whoop, and then whoop, outside, and he's gone. 46 yards, third rushing touchdown, 28-17 bites. Outstanding blocking by his offensive line on a stretch play. Great seal blocks inside, the kick out outside. Watch him set up the safety, give him a little wiggle right there, and again, that great speed gets him to the corner and beyond. 
Now under two minutes to go. That's the right side doing that as well, Tom. 35-17 Vikes. Peterson. What? 